Bob. Welcome everyone to the Film Vault. That is Anderson. I'm Brian Bishop, your host. Joined today by a special guest for a chosen by the guest top five. Top five 90s art house films as chosen by Gina Grad. Welcome to the studio, Gina. Uh, thank you. I am so honored to be here. It's crazy that, um, how long have you been doing this show? Oh, f- six months, I think. Yeah, uh, right. There's, there's many definitions or many answers to that question. Long answer since 2000. Three? Oh, good. I was short see, Anderson, answer since 2010. Anderson picked up what I was putting down. Um, that uh, it's insane that this is my first invitation to the film vault. Yeah. I don't think but I'm happy to be here. First couple How iterations. Dare you? You've known me for maybe a decade. <laughs> yeah. So I'm. I'm just. I'm. I'm ready to bring my A game. I'm happy to be here. Anderson was opposed to not just to oh, the really? idea of guests, but yeah, but you specifically was weird. Well, I mean, I care enough about you, and I like you as a person. Thank I, you. I, I like to. I mean, you're finally free of the shackles of this man, <laughs> and That's to right. actually have to bring I'll you back. back to yeah. come back. Yeah. No. I. It's it like was, having to face your accuser in court <laughs> again. It's it like, She's finally lining. free. Yeah, I, I'm here to give my uh, to give my uh, impact statement. Oh, good. I've heard you in this number of ways. That's exactly right. But no, I haven't seen you since I was promoting groupers on yeah. uh, ACS. So How it's many, great. It's like to, a couple years. Like two and a half years, three years ago, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. I thought it's, it was much earlier than that. Well, what do I? You made the movie. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it was like 2019. Yeah, wow. it came out. So yeah. that's it was fun to have right. you on. It was fun to be on. So was, thanks for saying so. I, yeah. I've heard, I've heard many. Uh, I've heard the lore. Know, let's, let's hear the lore. Not to talk, make it all about me, but I'm, I'm well, still curious as to, to what, the podcast. as to How? what the uh, what the idea of like somebody who doesn't know who I am, yeah. but knows about me through Corolla people. Well, here's the thing. I, as you can probably imagine, between radio and and, and comedy and whatever, I I work and grew up with and hang out with mostly like me, like bristly men, yeah, yeah, yeah. and so I'm kind of used to it. But I had a I was a little. Um, my cockles were up mm, when cockles. you were coming on. Interesting. My kishkas, use that word. yeah, as the as the Yiddish people say, because I've heard you were abrasive. Yes. Cantankerous. Yes. Contentious. Mm. Yes. Contentious, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so I was All these afraid. All true with certain people, but but uh, I was afraid that it was for whatever reason, and this is I think maybe more for my therapist. Men like that tend to find me and just fucking eviscerate me. So huh. I was afraid that you were going to be mean to me. It's weird that you landed on Corolla. What? What's funny <laughs> no. is... He, he's always actually... He he punches with love. No, no, no. I, Corolla and I had our, our misgivings for like six years You're when I worked with him. You're plastic snowman. I, yeah, it's the best. It's the best. But uh, yeah, I just didn't like the idea of, of, of working for someone. I worked with Adam. Yeah. You know, I, 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 he wasn't my boss. He didn't sign my checks. And I think that was the main uh, problem. No, you know, I have said many times when I've introduced people to Adam, like, oh, I work, this is my boss. I work for him. And he will always crack it up. Mm-hmm. You work oh. with me. So maybe, hey, maybe that came from uh, all those. Yeah, maybe that was could you. Have. Yeah, realistically, all the things. Because I'd be said drunken about. on on air many a nights, going, you know, some checks crawl. Shut up. Oh, so it was like gloves off with you guys. Oh, uh, a few times, yeah. Few Obstinate, times. I would also. But hey, we're cool. Wow. We're, we're totally cool now. I'm been impressed. Nothing but kind and sweet to me uh, since uh, since we both grown up. And I appreciate that, and I would say the same about you because uh, again, I was worried that you were going to be a <sighs> like a. It, this is, I don't know why this name came into my brain. It's going to a hurt. Oh, no, this. it's going to, it's okay. going to hurt. I'm joking. Um, I don't mean that. I don't know what your political affiliations are. I, I don't know. Like a Trump to you. Worse. Interesting. So worse. much, so a, much worse. A Rudy, a Rudy? Oh God, what? you should be a so Ru- lucky. Rush Limbaugh. Fuck, keep going. Who are we going with? Us? Satan himself? AJ, Alex Jones. Oh, no I was afraid you were going to be like really mean and like hype, <laughs> way too hyped up. Really? And you are so not that. And yeah. I am so. Okay. I, I feel I'm uncomfortable so now. Relieved. We're making this way too much about about me. But yeah, Gina, Alex, what's, Jones. what's funny now? Having known them both, you know, all the words we we all the all the uh, adjectives we threw out yeah. are applicable to Anderson. That said. When you get, and he is very. Turn your headphones off, Anderson. He's very similar to Corolla. Very similar. Interesting. There will be similarities all the time that I notice, and he doesn't want to hear that. And Corolla Corolla's is very funny, though. That, that's that's no, where you're I'm not the, the same the, person, but you have many similarities, including mm. a big heart and large yeah. for all the uh, smoking and yeah, gorge. Drinking, but yes, uh, but yeah. also uh, Anderson has a big heart. And I would no, never. I the He's... last word I would describe Anderson as. Well, there's other, other last words, but one of the last words is bully. Yeah. He's not a bully. He's not Alex anything, Jones-esque. He's, he's going out of his way to watch out for... Oh. Yeah, I like to, I like he to see the fishes bees out of his pool. <laughs> if but somebody's who, a bully in the room, I will I will come and try and like even that. And that's, oh, that's I think hot. that's a lot of things, that, what happened too with the uh, Corolla is like, I saw him bullying <laughs> Drew right in front of my eyes. I actually got to the bottom of that after he left and I said, mm. I would always be protecting my mom against my dad who was like fairly oh. abusive verbally and... Uh, 
we'll leave it there. Intellectually. And uh, intellectually, for sure. Sexually. And then I saw the same, intellectually, not sexually. And then I saw the same thing going on right before my eyes with Drew getting bullied and uh, abused mm-hmm. by Corolla. And I would try and come to his rescue and Drew didn't care or need it. And, sure. uh, and then Corolla would just see me as being like so, you know, a yeah. person hard I to work with. I get that. That all makes no person hard to work with. I was hard to work with. I was White very hard knighted to work for with, yeah. Drew. He's like, I'm a fucking yeah. doctor. Man. I, you know what? I'm the, a grown man. But you know what? He needed protection. Like, he would have books thrown at him, like headphones just I, hurled at his face. Like, ev- everything you're saying, Travis. Like Corolla. I was there for that. No, once you came oh. in, he, uh, he mellowed out because he finally had a suckler. That's and he, right. He, he, got, he got calm. I, I placated him. You did. <laughs> you're like, finally, somebody who laughs at everything. That, he, he, that was like his drug. Like, his soothing drug was you going, ha, that's right, boss. Looking good, boss. He was pretty fun. That's so funny because that is so Plus. not Brian. That's right. I really came a long way. Yeah, you really came into your own with the point yeah, shitting. I know. Eh. Anderson is like shocked to find out that I'm known for shitting on Adam's point. He's mm-hmm. known for just being argumentative. So yes. It feels like Corolla finally. Taking the con- oh, no, contrarian. I'm yeah, no. argue a lot. No, you're right. You're not an arguer, but you are contrarian. Where'd you learn that? What? I learned from the best. Being being the same place all my drops. Up here. <laughs> Up here. All right. Um... <laughs> Yeah, so I, it Who seems to me man? like maybe you lost your job because Corolla finally found an exit from Brian. And, and I'm collateral damage. Yeah, surf. you're collateral damage. Yeah, it's yeah. very possible. Um, but but I, I echo Brian's sentiments when he wrote a, a lovely little uh, note online. I was like, you know what? That's exactly right. And I said, look, I have been in radio since 2009. I have been through two format flips, three layoffs, and this man kept me employed for eight years. Mm, like, yeah, yeah, that's that's, I, that's very a debt of gratitude. Rare. Brian and I were talking about that. Absolutely, how rare that is because like this business is one gig to the next. It's very Always. very rare that we're something all lasts. Journeyman, no matter what they tell you or what what you're promised, this is just it's the way it is. It is. So I'm eight I'm years is very grateful. Run. Yeah, a great run. It freaks my wife out. She's a social worker and she uh, she can't imagine the idea. She hates being married to someone who like doesn't have job security. She, it freaks sure. her the fuck out. But eight years is a great run. I think that's the worst part of your marriage. Oh, I mean, there's <laughs> me in general, too. Very rude that you would say <laughs> that. Sure. Bro. I know, it wasn't nice. Uh, hey. I'm showing, I'm peacocking for Gene. I got some I questions, like too. Like, uh, we come from the same circle. Like, we've we've overlapped, but never really worked together. Yeah. Like, I, I worked, uh, I ran a uh, show with uh, Tim Conway Jr. for a while there. I'm so confused by this. Tim, Tim Conway Jr., he's a, he's a man that you worked with? Uh, no, I'm I'm very familiar <laughs> with him. Just confused by the press. <laughs> <laughs> when did you work for, for Timmy? Um, I don't even know. Was it, was it the, like early two thousands, maybe? Where? Uh, at Westwood One. He, it was just on weekends. It was oh. the worst overnight shift I've ever done, but nice. it paid really well. It was yeah. Three a.m. to six a.m. And he was doing it with the doctor, and they were like, "Yeah, they, they were selling pills." Yeah, they were. What was, was the doctor? I felt a little uncomfortable about it, Do but it paid, it paid my rent. Like, <laughs> was it was one it? day a, a week would pay my rent? That see, that's the good pay to play gig. I started out at KLSX doing overnights, and I was paid. I mean, what what was minimum wage in two thousand three? Oh yeah, yeah, it was in the neighborhood like six seventy five. Maybe, and I was commuting alone from just the the worst. Part of Echo Park. The passion. And I, I literally, I would, ha- there were chicken, Brian knows this, there were chickens and roosters that I have to kick away from my car. Well, I'll kick the, don't kick the birds. No, well, you have to, or they'll try and get in. Mm-hmm. There's all, same thing with gangbangers. They always had their slushy cups kick, on my car. Kick the gangbangers. I would ask them very nicely yeah. to move their big gulps so they didn't fall. Right. And then. Got on the gulpo? <laughs> is that how you say it? And then walking home. Oh, no, no, grande is sort of big, so uh-huh. that was right. Gra- Golpo grande. Golpo grande. Maybe. Right. And then when I'd walk home late at night or early in the morning, as it works, I was doing overnights at Kayla Sex while I was working eight other jobs, the cops would come and roll up and ask me if I wanted to ride, and I would be like, no, get the fuck out of here. Mm. Like, they'll think I'm in Exactly. Yeah, yeah, if yeah. it was hard, there was they were training dogs for dog fight. Like, it was a horrible... Right. Street Echo Park before it turned hipster too. It's a little hipsterish now. It but was I, in there before the gentrification. Not even close yeah. to gentrification. You're living the dream. Yeah. Living the dream. That's right. Yeah. When the gentrification yeah. happened, they swept Jean out. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't look That's Jewish. Right. Get her out of here. So today's topic, I love it. Uh, it's a Gina topic. It's going to be top five art house films, and it's te- technically art house from Gina's art '90s art house films, which is like my wheelhouse because I, I that's oh kind of when I fell the in sweet love spot here for the film with movies was the '90s is yeah, when I same. really not art house movies like, like primarily, but I just love movies and I started like seeing what they were capable of and like different avenues and how some were experimental and some were made for everybody. You were actually you were telling me before the show that you actually saw these. Tell me how you you well, came across your. You asked me like, how do you define art house? And as Brian uh, knows, see, I was trying to avoid that. Oh, I'm it sorry. Makes <laughs> no, because like, it could be indie, it could be no longer. Well, no, I'm leaning with the French accent. <laughs> if it, 
if, if it helps at all, I'm trying to make myself look bad, not okay. you. Yeah. And as Brian knows, like if uh, you know, a happy night for me is a 47th viewing of The Sopranos. Mm-hmm. I don't see a lot of movies. I'm, not, you know, people who are like, I just don't like music. Mm. Like those people need to need to go to hell for all damnation mm-hmm. and eternity. I'm not, sort I'm of that way. Family, so. Okay. okay. No, and I am true, actually. I'm just, I like comedy. I like true crime. I like what basic mm. bitches like. But mm. I grew up on stand-up. I like, w- like listening to comedy. I like watching comedy. And so I'll just kind of watch the same thing over Another and over again. Another reason why I don't want to subject you to him. For, I get for it. Understood. Round. Understood. No, I get it. Just things that it's nice to, to have a buffer. Uh, but yeah, so the one thing that was really, I was like, God, you guys have sure have done every topic on the planet. And I'm sure you've probably done this one, too. No. Not this one, no. No, this it, oh. when Brian <laughs> look at, no, look at the fried. Really good. <laughs> when Brian pitched the show to me years and years ago, I'm like, yeah, well, after a while, we're just gonna you know start running on topics. He's like, literally, I promise you, never will. We yeah. never will. And Gina will make sure that happens. Honestly, so, Gina, we have a document of probably 200 topics to do. And are you listen- serious? And some are better than others, but they're all ones they haven't That's done. That's amazing. And it's also a listener-driven uh, sure. program program where people actually you know pay to kind of sponsor an episode and oh, come up with a topic on their own. I love and that. And they submit their own top five. They get a yeah. red with ours. Oh, that's great. It's good stuff. So uh, a particularly shining spot in, um, in a young Gina's history growing up in Kansas was, um, we, and we're, I would, uh, like alternative was just kind of coming on the scene and like, you know, like theater people and like thinking we're better than everybody else and mm-hmm. just like this is assholes. Mm-hmm. And so oh, I forgot about the theater background. That's that, right. That factors in. So going back, you know, and trying to find like cool stuff to do, like on a Saturday night that right. we thought was cool and we're like very underage, we would dress up in like what we thought was like vintage attire. We could not be friends. Oh, it gets worse. At the time. We would go to the coffee shop. The, I'm no. sorry. I'm sorry. The coffee, coffee house. house. Gotta go to the coffee house. Java yeah. Gaia downtown right. in Kansas yeah. City. And then we would Java go Gaia. see a, a movie in like a 20 seat theater in, mm-hmm. in the art house downtown. Right. A lot of and scoffing. Would there Obviously. be an aisle down the middle? There was no aisle down the middle. No, there was a small, seat. Seat. small okay. theater. Well, so, sometimes there's small. Th- I know yeah. what Brian's getting after because a couple of those smaller ones around here, they had like four seats on each side. Oh, no, that right sounds fancy. It's like a regional jet. <laughs> These were not. Th- this was like an old broke down okay. theaters. And we thought we were so cool to go. And I haven't honestly, cards on the table, I haven't seen these movies since oh, then. Oh, okay. but they I haven't even seen ever. That's a Brian but movie. They have- <laughs> it is actually. They have stuck with me. I've seen four of my five. There are plenty of. Uh, by the way, I have a list a dozen long, and so I, I had to, you know, kill some of my babies on here by not mentioning them. But they all came rushing back, and the feeling I have, and the moments I remember for these movies, I really that was like a really mm. great time for me, and I, I'm excited to talk about these, and I'm excited to see if you've ever heard of them. Yes. I'm oh, sure dare, you have. I dare. love, I love to learn about new. Uh, first of all, it frustrates me at first, but then I love, you know, going back and, and, and tracking them down and finding well, and, them. And, and be like, what? And as Brian knows, you know, from our four and Rotten Tomatoes on the Corolla show, some of these movies, we could never guess what the score was because we liked them because mm-hmm. we saw them when we, we were eight years and old. Like, but the critics who came up in the 60s and 70s, did they Yeah, like of course it's a terrible movie, but we didn't know. So these are probably terrible movies too. How's Rotten Tomatoes work though? Like, do, do they have to like, rate them now. It's, it's not like they went back and said, LA, uh, LA Times, New York Times gave them thumbs up, so we're going to... Oh, no, uh, that's a Brian that question. It's mostly, so it's a mostly contemporaneous reviews, reviews at the time, and there'll be some like that are written later of the fact, like, oh, I'll look back at, I don't know, the, the fucking Godfather Part 3 mm. or whatever, and they'll incorporate those, but the majority are the reviews from the time. All right. That's why you see like 25 reviews for like right. a movie from the 50s. Yeah, like right. HUD or something. Yeah. HUD, HUD, exactly. Yeah. So oh, I'm, I'm excited to see what you guys come up with. I'm excited to pretend like I've heard of them. It's going to be fun. You will have, <laughs> Gina, you will have heard of at least three of my movies. Oh, so Brian, do you want to uh, regale us with fan fiction since you've done so wait, little today? No, I don't, but I do want to... Uh, there was something I was going to I prefer that oh, you do. Uh, Gina, I know you like The Simpsons uh, as much as me and Love. possibly Anderson. You know we used to do Simpsons trivia? And that's how we bonded? Yeah. What? Uh, mm-hmm. Anderson had a, wall, a desk calendar, tear away Daily. Simpsons a day uh, I desk this, calendar. This dubs tales into our fan fiction you know, or, does, our list. I, oh. And uh, we, we, we go back and forth through months at a time. You know, mm-hmm. just I was going to say, why did that go away? But it was a this finite was number of guesses. Plus, we stopped working together. Right. Yeah. God. Oh, God. Stop talking. Yeah. 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 
Yeah, we did stop talking off anyway, the air. Anyway, it comes, continues. A Simpsons, <laughs> a Simpsons reference comes up he on the show. He was winning too, so I was trying to ditch the game. A Simpsons reference comes up on the show once in a while because uh, I, when you mention your friends all piling in and getting off to see yeah. the cool movie at yeah. the cool theater, it reminds me. I Naked Lunch. Four. Yeah. Uh, no, uh, that's a good one too, yeah. but uh, Barton Fink. Bart, we're going to see an R-rated movie. Bart it's called Fink. Bart and Fink. Oh, I can't go. Oh, you're lost. They drive away. Bart and Fink. Bart and Just Fink. chanting it. Good stuff. Good stuff. They like an R-rated movie. That's good. That's you and your of friends. all movies. Yeah. Remember how frustrated and upset they were when they walked out of Naked Lunch? Naked. I think they ditched and went and saw Naked Lunch. Naked lunch. <laughs> there was like no nudity, no lunches. No, there are two things wrong with that title. <laughs> <laughs> Good stuff. Um, right. Am I allowed to interject? Uh, anytime. I already I, steamrolled you once. Well, so. I was told that I could talk about the movies I saw. Yes, yes, yeah, that's something we do with the guests. All of so fiction. We're going to start with. Yeah, let's start with Gina. Yeah, we. The, what have you seen? Did I just bully my way no, to the no, front of the line? I was just about to talk. I about. mean, you're just stepping on the listeners who provide uh, sustenance to keep the show going. Yeah, exactly. But it's okay. Yeah, no, it's I fine. think it is too. I think what, that they probably be seen, into it. What have we seen recently? Okay, I saw some really <laughs> random movies the last few days, yeah. and I'd love to. Last few days. We're yeah. making use of your time. Here's the thing. Hmm. I don't get a lot of time off, and say, now it's gone the from hot. famine to feast. Yeah. So I, I've started watching a bunch of movies and now I'm sort of back on a schedule. But um, a movie I had been wanting to see for years and never bothered and finally just dove in. The Rock. The Lobster. Oh, Lobster's good. I got problems with it. Whew. Second half, I, I agree. mean, yeah. yeah. Like, Second keep it in the hotel. Was, I love the premise. I oh. love that this is what happens, but then... First half was great satire. The second half was... Yeah, yeah. I c- totally agree. Mm. And then also it's like, but wait, does this really have to happen? Because it doesn't seem to really... Ha- you don't have to turn into an animal. And are they really turning into animals? Or is it just like a ruse by the by the hotel mm. managers? No, I mean, are they just picking an animal and then they're going to find one and they're saying this was your best friend? <laughs> no, they are, they are turning into the animal. I mean, it's Yargos Lanthimos who creates these like absurd uh, uh, situations where the, the rules and the, <laughs> the movie lives and dies on the rules. But the rules don't apply to everybody. What they about the loners? In the movie, like... So they don't. Colin Farrell's de facto girlfriend, I think, is simply credited as cold hearted woman. Yes, cold hearted woman. Yes, girl when, with nice hair. And when she uh when he dares to um show some emotion yep. after his friend I think jumps out a window, or the woman jumps out the yep. window, uh she's like, What are you doing? He's like, Nothing, I'm doing nothing. Yep. Like, are you crying? I said she's very upset. Yeah, I love I love the premise, I love the characters. I just wanted it to go further. I was like, but that that's the thing, so many other people didn't turn into animals. The killing of a sacred deer. Goes no, further. Don't yes. Do Watch the killing. Don't do that. Nicole Kidman kills it. She's fantastic she in, in it. I'm yeah. intrigued. Colin Farrell also kills we it. We come to this place. Prime. To kill sacred she's, dudes. She's, no, she's known for better things. It's I've it's, never heard of it's, it. It's the same director he made, I think, right after The Lobster. And like, I, love I liked weird it more. Shit. It's, was he dog tooth? It's or, crazy. Was he dog tooth? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yargo's uh, dog tooth put him on the map. Dog oh, tooth. he did the. I mean, she liked dog he tooth. did the. Um, the favorite. That was the favorite, but he didn't write I, the favorite. I just watched the favorite oh. again. He didn't watch. He didn't write the favorite, so it's got a different flair. Right. right that's right. Yeah. I I loved that movie. I thought that movie was amazing. That one followed actual rules that exist here on Earth. Right. <laughs> like he's, yeah. He's he's known for creating these premises. That, that uh, movie's fantastic. Um, I also watched. Oh, guess what I watched last night, which I'd never heard of, and Andy wanted to watch. Tell me. Side effects. Mm-hmm. I don't love. Have we seen that? Yeah, That's, yeah. It's the, uh, uh, Jude Law, Catherine Zeta Jones, Mooney Mara. It's the, uh, the blah, 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 what's his name? Uh, Soderbergh. Yeah. That's why Channing Tatum's in it. Side effects. It's, it's, he's this, uh, Jude Law is a, a psychiatrist. And Got a twist ending. Yeah. I don't think I saw it. Very twisty. Okay. Um, thought the twisty was a little too twisty. I was okay. like, eh. yeah. but I really, I'd watch it again for sure. It and I'd recommend it right around the time of like girl on a train and a uh, gone girl. And it kind of slipped into that. Thank you. Because what I kept saying to my husband was this is a better version of gone girl. Yeah. Well, I mean, mm. I hated gone kind girl. Of a low bar. <laughs> yeah. Gone girl's one of the worst movies. Ever. <laughs> yeah, I'm not allowed to say that. that. It's not, no, it's, it's not it's, crazy. It's, girl it's real on a train. bad. Why are it's you a, friends with Ben Affleck or something? It's a bad no, movie. No. <laughs> it's a, it's a below average movie yeah. made with skill. Yes. Well said. Are you friends with Rosamund Pike? No. Okay. Um, my friends with me. I also, well, I, I, just, have a, I have a personal vendetta against that man, and I, I hate him very much. Why? Eh, it's a bit of a bit, but uh, it's a girl related from back really in the day, from around the nineties. Yeah. Are you from Boston? 2000s. No, but he came out here to my territory. <laughs> I'm from LA. 
He came and he started. Wow. Started peeing all over. Peeing the all over. He yeah. courted a lady of yours. Uh, he uh, not only did he court. He yeah. forked. He for, I, I think it was, yeah, uh, 4th of July. I was actually at Westwood One running. It was when I was early in my, my tenure, and I still have to work on the holidays and run the best ups. And my girlfriend was supposed to come visit me, and she didn't. She was at a 4th of July party with Matt Damon and Ben Affleck, and uh, wow. she's like, they have a they have a elevator in their house. I don't give a fuck. Oh, my God. And then her friend, her friend let me know everything that happened. Oh, my God. Mm-hmm. Looking back, mm-hmm. can you slash do you blame her? Nah, I okay. I mean, right, plus, I, you know, the earlier she was out of my life, the better because yeah. she's all sorts of crazy. No, Why are you digging that. on this? This I dog just curious. died. Oh, about I, that too? I am. I am sorry to hear that. Brian loves to make jokes about that. I don't. Think I'm, it's funny I'm, at all. I'm standing. I up just for stopped you. crying about it like a week and a half ago. Huh. She's mm. a beautiful little uh, my little old lady, she and wants. I miss her very much, my little girl. And I've never, uh, I've never lost. Uh, I've been in such pain. Speaking Thanks, of peeing Brian. all over the place. Thanks, Brian. She didn't pee a lot towards the end. <laughs> Can I tell you about the other two movies I watched? This yes, weekend? I would love to hear. Um, that. Let's get off my dog. Please. Okay, uh, I will tell you about the worst movie and then the better movie. Oh, oh I'm afraid this concerns me. I get scared. I have been wanting for, and it, Brian knows because I brought it up to him uh, multiple times. Mm-hmm. I'm Rock. sure he wasn't listening, but um, me that joke. Everybody said, you got to see it. You got to see it. Uh-oh. It's so scary. Oh, no. oh, God, you got to see Just Barbarian. Oh, yeah. There were scary parts. Here's my question. Mm-hmm. Okay, so the beginning You're is You're not very... making any friends, by the way. I think a lot of people we both love did. this We movie. talked about it last okay, week. Okay, here's... Here, let, me just, let me just say what I got to say. Our... The first part of the movie is great. Mm-hmm. And I love the, the, the sort of like... Not, not really unreliable narrator, but you're being led down the wrong direction of Literally. who you're supposed to be afraid of. And I thought that was great. And it's creepy and it's gross. The fucking reason that that monster exists mm. is... Uh, well, you don't like that? Uncool, to well, say mean, the least. I don't think they're going for cool, Gina. Math, <laughs> math-wise, Check I don't... Check out this cool monster uh, that was created by coolness. But here's the thing. Does it... <gasps> does, Sweet nature. Does the, does the math add up? I don't care. Okay. Because yeah. um, once... There's a there's a very distinct scene in the movie where it kind of just shifts. Yeah. I mean, obviously everyone knows of the shift without we're we're, we're tap toeing around this because there's still some yep, people. Yep, it's a great movie. PCH. Great movie for sure. for discovery. But no, that's not even the moment I'm talking oh, about. Past PCH, I'm still completely in. Past the the Oops. smash cut mm-hmm. to a guy. Yeah. Yeah. And then same. I'm in. I'm in too. There's a measuring scene, which is hilarious. I'm oh, still yep, completely yep, on yep, board. Yep, yep, and yep. then shortly after that, it becomes a different movie. Di- you're absolutely right. almost a different cast. Like, I'm like, okay, now I believe nothing and nothing is adding up. Much like you said, and I, I had a hard time, but our, our, our producer Avery, he's like, well, it was Brom. I loved it. Can I say one thing though, that I've never said about a horror movie and that I didn't think I would appreciate. And if you need to cut it out, you can, but I'm going to be very, very vague. Mm. I don't cut things. Okay. There ultimately <laughs> ends up being, talk about a twist, an emotional twist of a sweetness mm. that kind of breaks your heart. Careful. That's it. I didn't, but I was that, like, oh. then you should like it. If I, it's breaking your heart. That I actually appreciate it. All right. All right. That's it. That's no, all I'll say about that. No, I, I, my main criticism was that, that there were so many absurd plot holes and inconsistencies in the third act. But for me, the movie had been so good up till then. I forgave it. It's uh, yeah. I forgave it's it. It's fun. I just, I was, I was ready to be scared out of my mind. And the first half it wasn't and beyond actually was very scary. Yeah, there was yeah. very scary. No, that's true. And the it measuring, was measuring was very scary. I was like, what's going to happen here? Yeah. Like, there's a whole lot of stuff. There's a bucket, a bed, and a camera. That's all you need to know. And I'm scared. I and was that's not even scared. the worst part. Gio Vani, super fan Gio Vani. I love Gio. He sent, uh, he sent me a, a very long email, as he's known to do. In fact, I'm behind on my Gio emails. I love Gio I emails. Of I read but the he, chapters. He was very astute in, in pointing out that it was all uh, under the guise of you know female rape, essentially, and uh, the threat of rape from the very Indeed. beginning and all the way through. He's but ab- like, absolutely And that's right. like, as a, as a guy over here, I wasn't really thinking it yeah. that through that that's the over like the theme of the entire movie from yeah. the beginning yeah. is, and then another thing with staying power with barbarian is i think for decades people will be going to airbnbs and be like ooh this has got a barbarian vibe <laughs> that's and true they'll search around it's, you're that's absolutely right power. it's part of the zeitgeist yeah. and, and there were things i absolutely liked about it i just i think anything that's built up you got to see it you got to see it there's yeah. always going to be a disappointment that's not the fault of the movie am i very obtuse for not picking up on the theme of rape throughout no. Even I though like, when you take a step back, it's like, oh, obviously it's right there. You'd it's the be, threat, it's the actual action, you know, and then it's the action. Geo is very um, thoughtful, yeah. so I'm not surprised. But if you didn't pick up the theme of rape in, say, Promising Young Woman, you'd be up to. He wanted, I can't give, I can't talk about, I still get very upset about your take on, on Promising Young Woman. He wanted more bloodshed. 
Oh, Brian. Oh, yeah, it needed yeah. to be bloodier. Yeah. Well, yeah. you wanted like actual murders and deaths. No, and that more wasn't rape. The point, <laughs> Brian. Okay. All right, can you do the fan flick? Oh, no, we're just going to one more. By the way, there is a uh, horror film on my list of top five that was just that. You got to see it. You got to see oh, it. Oh, I can't wait. The well, the movie I actually... Hype. I, I really enjoyed that I saw this weekend that um, I, I had some problems with the ending, but really enjoys the menu. Really the sweet. Menu. Yes. Yeah, I got, I got problems with the ending too. Look right. at that. Okay. I just heard about, oh, yeah, my wife and I sat down at a diner just recently, a couple days ago, and uh, some, some famous chef was like serving some Louis the Fourteenth or some bullshit, <laughs> and uh, he, the, the, the king or the, he asked for a, a doggy bag, and evidently the chef killed himself shortly oh thereafter. Oh, my God. And I said, you know what? He was probably leading up to that anyways. That yeah. pushed him over the edge. Yeah. But I immediately, thought, I immediately thought of the menu. Yeah, of course you did. Yeah, yeah. This is called The Mess. That was the turning point the for me. Yeah. Oh, right. well, I mean, that was kind of the end of act one almost. <laughs> <laughs> I do have questions about it, but they're probably off-air questions that I'm desperate for you to if answer. If I went in the menu knowing nothing about it other than it was I didn't a fancy know restaurant, you didn't know there was nothing. a horror element? No. Or like, okay, uh, I, I didn't wish know that I got to see it that way because I, I think I, I would have liked it. it more. I loved it. I just, the only thing I'm confused about is um, everyone seemed to sort of change their tone at the end and I was confused about why. I didn't, yeah, I didn't earn it. Okay. It didn't, cool. I didn't, I didn't, Otherwise, I, great movie. Yeah. I don't, I don't think it earned it and I, didn't, I wasn't buying some of the motivations yeah. or okay. actions at the end. Which, same, same with the, the old barbarian. Yeah, okay. I, have, I filibustered long enough. Brian. Are really reading all this? You're asking, Are you capable of doing that or should I? you read all this? Oh, Jesus. Uh, uh, Devin, this is also a smaller type. What is you going can, on? You can uh, control that. Devin Miller New, AZ on Instagram. Computer. <laughs> What is his name? I'm sorry, Steph. This is the portion of the show where the listeners let us know. It's Great. Fan Fiction. This is uh, Mitch, Mitch uh, Burns puts together every single week. The Mitch Burns. And uh, usually Avery reads it, but uh, Brian's going to stumble through it this week and it'll Thank be fun. Thank you. And these are, this is what the uh, sampling of what the listeners have been uh, watching since we last Great. talked to you. Devin Miller AZ on Instagram uh, checks in, says, I want to dance with somebody. Mm. That's a weird. Oh, he saw the movie. I want to dance with somebody. Oh. Uh, pretty average biopic. Uh, nothing really made it stand out. And when I saw the credits, all uh, when I saw when I saw they were the, lip credits, the credits, that all the musical performances were lip synced. That took away from the actress's performance a little. I totally get it. I had the same complaint about Rami Malek. Uh, I get mm. that it would be virtually impossible for an actor to live up to Whitney's voice. Not at all. There are plenty of great singers out there. Uh, that's me editorializing. Yes. But then, but having seen some pretty good attempts recently with respect, there you go. And Elvis, also true. Uh, that's a uh, strike against the movie. All right. Thank Fair. you. Thank you for weighing in. Uh, karma. F- Hold on a second. Let me get you got a massive face wound. Karma it's fight on squad. The other Harry side over here. Yeah, but it's so it's such a deep wound. I got to scratch the other side of my face. That's not true. That's, that's how not how, how physiology works at all. Hey, see this? That's the size of a bullet. Oh, yeah, that's are, right. you, are you quoting that a movie? <laughs> I'm quoting, <laughs> quoting myself. Yeah. Uh. Mm-hmm. Nah, Karma Fight Squad on Instagram says, watched Puss in Boots, Mm -hmm. The Last Wish, with the family and was pleasantly surprised. John Mulaney as Jack Horner, Florence Pugh as Goldilocks, and Mm -hmm. Olivia Coleman as Mama Bear were standouts, exclamation point. Lewis Longshadow on Twitter, white noise, you Mm -hmm. should get a medal. (laughs) You should get a medal if you made it through the first 20 minutes. It straddles the line between entertaining and pretentious. I can't recommend it. Well, uh, Lewis Shit. Longshadow, we just talked about this <laughs> on uh, the previous episode of Flick Fashion. I, I think Brian and I get a medal. And I'm I also made, realizing... I made, it through. I made it through the first 20 minutes. We're, I'm also realizing that we're not supposed to be doing fan fiction right now. We're supposed to do it on you the idiots. next episode. Hey, what do you want from me? I'm just the host. Wait, this is... But this is okay. Should it's we all right. Save, I save? don't know about white noise. I'm looking it up. Should we save the last two? Let's save the last two. All right, yeah. Well, for... For before, before, oh, after. Sure. Oh, before Jesus before. Christ. You want to just redo it? And I'll cut this out? Sure. All right. Anderson doesn't cut, except for when he fucks up, which is awful. <laughs> All right. We're going to lose that cut. You're going to lose that laugh. What's that? You're going to lose Gina's laugh that she just Oh, trust me. Oh, there's I more. That. I need that. He knows. He gets okay. me sometimes. Uh, let's uh, top five. That was, that was like a little fan fiction from Gina. That was oh, nice. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for letting me do that. That was like a featured fan flexion. I, I did. I don't know that Gina's a fan of the show. Wait, you hate when we call people fans of the show. You know we have fan flexion? I don't I didn't name it. Yes, you did. I think it, Mitch did, or you did, or maybe he said it ironically. It. I, I, I call it listener fiction. Affliction. Anderson like calling our listeners fans. I, fans you know who else here. hates that? Who? Tim Conway Jr. Oh, yeah? Thinks it's pretentious. It does feel feel a little pretentious. Yeah. Like it's short for fanatic. I exactly. don't think anyone's fanatical. Actually, yeah. there are a few people that are fanatical. Gio. <laughs> 
We love Geo. I do love Geo. Hey, all right. Uh, quick, speaking of fanatical and uh, pretentious and whatnot, I don't yes. know if anyone's speaking of that, but uh, let's let's talk a little bit about uh, Art House, just just for edification of myself as well, because you know it's it all kind of gets mixed together, uh, but. For those of you who are familiar with the movie Begotten that I assigned to Brian um, some years ago, it's high contrast, black and white. Um, oh, God. Begotten. It's, yes. all, it's all about a... a, a <laughs> I man. remember where I watched that. That's how much, uh, so impactful it was. It's about some kind of angel or something um, gutting, gutting God. Yeah. What and, year is it from? Hard to tell. Like 89, I think. Okay. He, he guts God, and then he's just, the rest of the movie is him just walk, walking through God's entrails and, huh. and meeting some things. It's that's one of the fun. toughest watches I've ever had to watch. And that's definitely considered. How long is it? Like 45 House. minutes? It's, it's short, but it feels like very, very long. It feels so, exceptional. I feel like I'm still watching it. <laughs> this is from film study scholars to, uh, in, in how they define an art house. Uh, that's not an art house movie, though. You never played in any house except the director's <laughs> house. I'm sure it played. It played. <laughs> In the director's house. <laughs> Dude, it led to his next movie, which was uh, Kiss of a Vampire, I think it was called. Uh, and uh, it was it was all about Nosferatu, the making of Nosferatu okay. with Willem Dafoe. That was the, I think that might have been his last movie. I don't know. But uh, <laughs> for a treat. Here, here's the, the actual <laughs> definition of art house Please. from film studies and scholars. All right. Uh, form, and I, so I just copy and paste of this shit. I don't, I don't know. Formal qualities that mark them as different from mainstream Hollywood films. These qualities can include, among other elements, a sense of social realism and emphasis on the authorial expressiveness of the director and a focus on the thoughts, dreams, and motivations of characters as opposed to the unfolding of clear goal driven story, which is most movies. We find out what the character. Yeah needs we're driven to love that character and then we want that character to get what they want right. i fell asleep by the end now. of the movie they get that but at like the end of act two right beginning of act three they lose everything and yeah. the farthest away y'all is lost whole, moment the whole formula right. yeah these movies definitely uh get away from that film scholar david board boardwell oh describes God, more. art cinema <laughs> as film genre with its own distinct conventions yes so. gina actually really crystallized it well which is you anderson are at a di well, I'm not say disadvantage but a different perspective here because growing up in la i imagine a lot of these films are very easily accessible right. in the cinema yeah whereas like gina was saying if you're in overland park kansas or fill in the blank of any you know suburb in part of the country even san carlos california sure. if you wanted to see like the cool indie movie that was making a lot of noise you had or you read about it in film threat magazine or mm -hmm. whatever you had to drive to san francisco or right. kansas city or wherever it was to the art house yeah. the right. place when, that showed these when, movies that's exact when you asked me you know how do you define art house i saw it at an art yeah, house, the art yeah. house. That's, that's all easy. i know very easy yeah <laughs> like we had lemlays which we still do and that, yeah. that was where it, you know it's Sad as I've gotten away from that with the AM with Movie Pass first no. and then AMC comes along and it's like so hard to say no to like twenty three bucks a month. And yeah. streaming too. And it's All right down watch. the street and I get yeah. to see Nicole Kidman. You know, tell <laughs> remind me of where I am every sure. time. Right. I don't know why you came to this place. <laughs> but also the art house movies now, if you want to watch them, you can rent them almost like VOD mm -hmm. as they're released. You don't yeah. have to go travel to out of town for yeah. you or down right. the street for us in LA. It's so. a rare thing now where there's the movie that like, oh, this is only playing in a few theaters. I guess I have to wait a while yeah. for it to get to me. Exactly. It was almost like a, like a feather in your cap, right? You know, you'd be like, oh, I saw that. Yeah, oh, yeah. You, you oh, 100%. Yeah. 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 All right, let's do this. Let's get, uh, we got a listener list as well. And uh, let's, uh, where are we going to start? Where would you like to start? Would you like to go first? No, I'm kind of like shy to... because uh, this is really. Come off is very shy, Gina. Thank yeah, you. Just, uh, this topic makes me. <laughs> A, this topic <laughs> makes me feel shy because I, again, I know very little about movies and even less about this topic, but oh, this topic right strikes the chord with me. So I'd rather uh, not go first. You can go last if you want okay. to. It's a lot of pressure. That's fine. A lot of pressure. Uh, for me, okay, so Gina, like I said, this is a sweet spot for certainly for me, definitely for Anderson. So uh, for me, I uh, instantly thought of five movies. I'm like, well, I could, this list could just be five of my favorite mm. movies of all time, and I could wax about movies we talk about all the time. Instead, I have those five movies, but I have a movie I'm pivoting to that maybe gets talked about less. Interesting. Uh, in fact, I was surprised, Anderson. Three of mine had never been on a top five list on the show. Mm. In all the years I've been doing it, never. I keep wow. notes for everything, and never, never once on a top five list. It includes my number five. My number five, if it was my just my five favorite and the, five favorite indie films, art house films, that ended up becoming five of my favorite films, I'd probably have Go. You ever see Go? I've never seen it. Oh, I know oh, it's yeah. supposed to be super Borrow cool. Borrow my DVD. Thank you. You'll love it. DVD Go, player. sweet. Um, oh. 
She has no, no DVD player. Yeah, DVD you, know, player. you can very easily stream it. Okay. As long as you say you have a TV, we're cool. Oh, yeah, I got one of those. Uh, I would have been Go, but uh, I was a different film that is a series of tangentially related vignettes. Mm. Robert Altman's Shortcuts. <gasps> Good Shortcuts choice, from 1993, directed mm-hmm. by Robert Altman. Are either of these names or titles ringing a bell? Robert Altman okay, rings good, a bell. Okay, good, 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 good. I forgot to ask your Wi-Fi password, so I'm looking everything up on my phone. Oh, no. Uh, I'll, I'll, it's I'll, I'll, write I love I'll write down a second. Bish. <laughs> That's exactly what it is. <laughs> you came up with it. Bish is me. Uh, shortcuts. Yeah, okay, so this is great. I love telling people. This is great. I can talk right to you and tell you about Please. shortcuts. So shortcuts, uh, and it's come up on the show years ago, maybe once, maybe twice. But I saw it. It's worked by Robert Altman. It's a series. It's set in L.A. It's uh, set against the backdrop of a. Uh, it. No, I won't say what happens at the end. But there's a. Wow. Catac- <laughs> well, there's a cataclysmic event that uh, unifies all of these stories. But it's a whole bunch of a very L.A. event. It's a whole. Uh, it's a whole bunch of uh, vignette stories. There's one about. I think it's like ten or eleven, right? There's one about a phone sex That's worker a who you know is just a, a beleaguered housewife. There's a one about Huey Lewis going fishing and finding a dead body. Like these are what. Oh, it's got a huge hold on. Real yeah. Huey Lewis? Robert Downey Jr. The ensemble <gasps> cast Chris includes... Chris Oh, my. Michael, Matthew Modine. Tom Wait. Julianne Moore. Fred Ward. Ann Archer. Jennifer Jason Lee. Robert Downey Jr. Damn. Madeline Stowe. Chris Penn. Jack Lemmon. Francis McDormand. Lori Singer. Andy McDowell. Buck Henry. Lily Tomlin. I don't know who that is. Damn. Huey Lewis. Lyle Lovett. And Tom Waits. Damn. Yeah, people love to work with Robert Elman. They love to work with him, but he couldn't get his movies distributed. He, he upset the studios. He upset the studio Why? system. I can't remember what the stories Didn't were. Didn't he make a movie called right. Kansas City? He did make a movie called mm-hmm. Kansas City. Missed Gingerbread. It. Popeye is probably his most successful. No. So probably the one that. Are you shitting me? I mean, oh, it's, it's the one that, that was most wide script. release. French yeah. Connection Popeye? No. What? No, no, no Popeye that's... Doyle. He made a Popeye adaptation with Robin Williams yeah. in like 1980. Oh, oh Shelley, that's, uh, you know I've seen that multiple Shelley times. Long. It was the least, <laughs> the least Robert Altman movie that yeah. could possibly be. Uh, didn't that get just so, so severely panned? I think uh, it got eviscerated, yeah. I feel like The I, Player would be his film that most, most people... Probably would. most... Yeah, I think Shortcuts actually really? followed it up. But no, no The Player is probably his most widely known right. movie. Don't make that no, noise. No one, right. no one likes right. that. I, I could look it up real quick. I mean, man, man, man was so prolific. He made many, many this, movies. Here's the story. Um, when I saw this movie, I was having oh. deja vu. And I'm like, I, 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 have I seen this? Like, I didn't see the theater. I rented it. Yeah. I'm like, I, I, I know what's happening here. I know who this character is. I've seen this. I, I know what this is. This is crazy. And uh, I got about halfway through the movie and I kept thinking about it and yeah. I finally put two and two together. This whole movie is based on a collection of short stories by Raymond Carver, which I had read. Wow. And, uh, so I read the short stories it was based on. Random. That's why it was all so familiar. Mm-hmm. But I was going nuts. I'm like, this is an original film. It's not a remake. I don't know what, I'm, Were I don't you know thinking what? that you might have a brain tumor? In retrospect, that might have been the first sign. Yeah. yeah. That was a tell. That's right. Like, what's going on? It's like great deja vu, like, but I've, it's I've not. I've seen this. Nominated, or one, actually, three Independent Spirit Awards. Best Short- feature, best director, best screenplay. Shortcuts did follow up the player. And Told then, you. Uh, and uh, yeah, he also was, uh, he, he trained, for lack of a better term, uh, Paul, Paul Thomas Anderson, like his, his understudy. Really? Kind of co-directed some huh. of his later films, like Gosford Park. Okay, he you know what? Ton, yeah. A ton Gosford from Robert Gosford Park got incredible acclaim. Did anyone actually see it? I love Gosford Park. Okay. For the same reason that I love Below Deck, because it, I don't know if you saw I, Go I'm on. having a hard time with these glasses, because I can't see you clearly when I'm wearing them. It's for the best. I, and then, no, it's not at all. And then when I can't see my, my screen, I'm having a, I'm still learning how to wear, wear glasses. It's a, it's a new development. Um, but yeah, it was, it's, it really gives you an idea of like how the top half and then the bottom half, cause it's all about the servants. Right. The upstairs this, downstairs. Yeah, yeah. And it was, it was really fascinating. I really enjoyed it. I, you know, I, I, I have room in my life for a Downton Abbey. Mm-hmm. So I, maybe I should revisit Gosford Wait, Park. Oh, you saw or, it. No, I didn't. Oh, I mean, I, I'm sorry. You should visit I did. It. I got bored. Oh, uh, you walked out with yeah. your vintage clothes on? Exactly. With an art house theater? My big fascinate around my head. <laughs> Should when we, did it come out? Should we let you go last? 2001. What, whatever you think. I don't have a whole lot to say about mine. Um, I just tried to go a little hard in the paint with Here's some of them. Uh, oh, thank you. <laughs> That's right. Intellectual. Enjoy. Mm-hmm. All right, I'm just going to say mine real quick because I don't want to speak too much. Uh, pie. Uh, oh, know, yeah. Darren oh, Aronofsky's Pie. I forgot about that movie. And uh, it's the very hard house. The uh, it's black and white. It's hard to watch. It's hard to follow. It's got actual bugs uh, uh, walk, uh, acting as, as viruses within this man's computer. 
it's hard to wrap your mind around it. Uh, and it, all you knew is you didn't enjoy what you were watching necessarily, but you were seeing <laughs> something different. So pie, I don't even have the year written down, but uh, I pie forgot is my, about that movie. My number five. 98. I'll tell you in a second. 98, Brian. Look, wow. look at that. Look at that. that. From deep. Wow. Oh, one more thing about Robert Altman. Please. And I'm so happy. I don't know if you have any uh, connection with David Allen Greer. They might have split up before. Uh, no, were. he's insulted me many times. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, he walked out. I, I love David Allen Greer, and he's the best. We used to have a, a decent working relationship until I, I offended him, and he walked off the show. What, what? what was the made, topic? You were the oh. topic. It's a whole story. I don't want to get into it. However, I, I, that's I, I, never heard I'm story. sorry. This conversation can go on. We're not listeners this week. We're not bringing that to the program, but uh, here's, here's interesting about Robert Ellman. <laughs> you weren't there, so <laughs> Robert Ellman directed David Allen Greer and David Allen Greer's very first feature-length film, and he had a big, big, fat, juicy role in it. It's called me? Streamers, oh. a oh. movie called Streamers, which I watched for my other film podcast when I two time on Brian uh, Cinematics. But uh, we pick a random movie from you know whatever year we land on mm. uh, each month, and Streamers was a Robert Altman movie I'd never seen, and it's all about the military and, and huh. being in the closet, and it was I felt like wow. a play, like a lot of Robert Altman movies uh, I feel like. But it was really interesting watching Dialogue David Allen Greer early like eighties, uh, wow. you know, being very dramatic and uh, like pre and living color. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Good interesting. Stuff. So, what, what was the story? Oh, I forget the details. <sighs> it was uh, there was a lot of details. Maybe we'll tell it at the Brian? end of the program. Okay. Uh, uh, Patreon not... <laughs> bonus. <laughs> yes, that's great. Um, 1983 is when uh, streamers. I've never heard of that. It's a very Matthew Modine. I mean, forget. is it a movie from that era? If Matthew Modine isn't in it, I know it's true, right? Who was Mark also Capozzi. on the show at one point? Oh on, yeah, on Corolla right. with us. Um, okay, I have one that I'm I'm going to go ahead and put my money on. Anderson has seen it. Hmm. Wow. That's, that's my really, guess. It's really hurtful. It's I know. And it should be. Um, there is a movie that is not a sequel, but it was, it was, I think the follow up to the one that sort of made. Grease two. How <laughs> dare you steal this moment from me? Uh, all right, no. Um, <laughs> it was a movie that in, in like the latter parts of high school and college was like really making the rounds. I saw it a million times. The, it was, it was, all about mood. It was a mood. The director, uh, I believe it was two directors actually, um, Jean-Pierre Genet and Marc Caro, The City of Lost Children. Yes. 1995, I believe. Follow up to Delicatessen, mm -hmm. which I like, but not as much. Oh, so the, the set in- uh, uh, I totally agree. This is the one in South America. No. No. No, it's a, it's a land that doesn't exist. Yeah, it's, it's like a land. faraway sci-fi wow. fantasy Frenchish something. You're familiar with this. Yeah, movie. and I saw yeah. this at the Lemley, which is really? the closest <laughs> thing we had on Art House Theater for sure. And they exactly. actually, I think they still have a poster of it. And I, they've wow. redone the Lemley, but they have a. You know, it's the kind of place where you go. Like Alamo Draft House probably yes. has a poster of City of the Lost Children. Absolutely. It's a great movie and French. But then I was really confused about Ron Perlman for a long time. Yes, who speaks is French he, throughout the movie. I know. I thought he was a big. This might be my introduction to Ron Perlman. Same. And I thought that he was a, just a large redheaded Frenchman. For, Same. And I'm like, wow, he does English. Yeah, blew American your accents, mind really with Sons of Anarchy, please. <laughs> but yeah, this is this. Yeah, it's fine. Uh. Um, it, I just grabbed a little bit of a snippet from just, just to give you an idea of the kind of mood that it it sets. This guy Crank, he's a highly intelligent Brian, but malicious, you yeah, <laughs> malicious being created by this vanished scientist. He's not able to dream, which causes him to age prematurely. So at his lair in, in this abandoned oil rig, he uses a dream extracting machine to steal dreams from children, mm. and then enter Ron Perlman, who is like a strong man in a circus. It's all very moody, very wet, very dark. And uh, I remember, I, I, I loved it. And when you, like, especially in Kansas, it'll be nothing for miles and miles and miles and miles. And then you'll drive by somewhere and it's dark and you just see, like, plumes and smokestacks and some, like, li like lighthouse lights going around. And I would always go, that is so very City of Lost Children. So City of Lost Children. It was very, uh, very stylized. Yes. And, uh, Good news for everyone. This is streaming on the Criterion channel. Oh, interesting. <laughs> also be able to rent on Amazon. Dig that city of children. Yeah. I it's come with, up on a number of lists. I Brian obviously doesn't listen to me. City of God. Very different from City oh, of God. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Very different. But I kind of had a feeling that Anderson would have yeah, seen well, it. I'm see. curious to see what, uh, if there's, because, you know, I was hiding from society in, in movie theaters for much of the 90s. Sure. So I saw a lot of these. I was actually dating a girl, <laughs> actually the same girl that uh, may or may not have done her deed with the uh, 
aforementioned uh, uh, Affleck. Wow. And uh, she th- managed a theater, and I would literally sleep at that movie theater. It was an Edwards movie theater out here. And they mostly first run stuff, but uh, we would get like, you know, get to build the, the, I didn't work there. I just hung out there like religiously. We would build the films as they came in, like on the actual wow. plates. And we would watch them at one in the morning before they're, you know, available for the public. I loved movies so much that I actually sought out a girl that I, I don't mean to s- blow movie. smoke up your ass because I think this is what it's, it's going to con- come off yeah. up. But you know, like we talk about like really super hot girls that like go on like late night talk shows like, oh God, I was such a nerd. You like have a cool guy vibe. Are you going to pretend that like that wasn't always the case? No, I mean, I, I had uh, I quarterback had some, football team. I oh, was, really? But I had, I had some <laughs> substance. I was I absolutely was. That's amazing. That's why I'm asking. But I had some substance abuse uh, issues, and I, I couldn't look people in the eye for a number of years. Substance sure. enjoyment. Sure. sure. Substance <laughs> enthusiast. Brian, what's your number four? Number four for me. Had this just been a list of my favorite indie films of the '90s, Train Spotting would have been number oh, four. Sure. Uh, but instead, I'll go with a different sort of weird, atmospheric, foreign film. And Gina, maybe you don't know this. This is my deepest pull, I think. Mm. So I'm gonna I'm gonna throw it out there. Exotica. Mm. Exotica. Heard like, of it, never seen it. I feel like we've had our differences about this one, have we? I, I like it. I, I thought I liked it and you didn't. I, no, I do. I like Exotica. Mm. I, wrote, I wrote a, uh, I'm not certainly going to say who, but I uh, wrote a uh, paper. For, I, I would write papers for friends uh, in uh, college. Oh, what? This is, the, this is the most hipster thing I've ever heard on the show. <laughs> it is? I, oh, wait. I thought you meant, oh. I, okay, never mind. What? what? You know, like plagiarism. I thought you were actually writing the paper just to give to your yeah. friend. Like, here's a paper I wrote. For consider. Okay. Let me know what you think. Okay, well. Oh, my God. Oh, Thank then God. you're going to hate my next one. I did do that, but I charged money. That's no. how I made money. You should not do that. You that's that. amazing. I and I, I wrote someone's, like, intro to film yeah, class Yeah, that's, that's cheating the system. I appreciate Exotica that. On Exotica, because, okay. they, they, Anderson, you remember, like, like intro to film class. Just write about the, the colors and the sounds and the blah, blah, blah and, the, and the fucking professor or TA, whatever, eats it up. It should be shocking to me that this happens at uh, USC, but it's not shocking <laughs> at all. No, there, there's yeah, a member of the crew team. Sick. You guys had a crew team? Where's the it's water? A, it's a joke. Oh, okay. I dare you. Surrounded by water. Not that kind of water. Exotica is a 1994 film, 1994 film written, written and directed by Adam McGoyan, uh, maybe best known for The Sweet Hereafter. Or Exotica. You think so? <laughs> yeah. Adam no. McGoyan, is, a lot of people know Exotica and like Exotica. The Sweet Hereafter was nominated for an Oscar. All right, settle down with your Easy. love for the Oscars. Just, all right, sweet air after probably. I, lo- I love a lot of them. Like, Ararat was fantastic. All about the, you might uh, like the, the genocide. After. I'm interested. Genocide. Does this have a, I have no idea what this is about. The poster, I'm getting, and I could be totally wrong, like an ex machina vibe? No, oh, it's, okay. it, it, it's, it involves strip clubs, but it's in. like art house strip clubs. It's Double like, in. Yeah, it's, it's like the artsy take on strip clubs. Like the, the strip club DJ, as I recall, isn't like, you know, Corolla's, hey, everybody. It's right. more like, and now come into the stage. Oh, I can get it. Classic. Classic. Yeah. Oh, the guy who plays this, the DJ or whoever this, this lead guy is, I'm looking at the uh, trailer. Um, he's in everything, he's always like a bad guy. That sounds familiar. Well, I don't know actors. Okay. So. I don't have Felicia's movie. Journey is my favorite Adam McGoyan movie. And I got to actually talk to the dude about it. And mm-hmm. we were nerding out on the soundscape and the sound design. Wow. And they were getting really mad at the junket because uh, he had to go to the next one. And like we we're having this love affair. It's 2001 at the uh, Toronto International Film Festival. And I remember uh, being able, I, I wanted to talk to that guy more because right? we were both on, this, like, on the same wavelength as far as what he did with that movie. And I was so impressed by it. And I don't think you know, everyone else was like, ah, what's, what's going on? Right, was, uh, I, I was talking about El- Elias Codius. Oh, Elias Codius. Elias, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, he's great. Elias yes. Codius. He's the strip club DJ. Yeah, yeah. he is in everything. Yeah. He's, like, he's, like, he's that guy. Yeah. His name he's is, we just call him not Chris Maloney. <laughs> yeah, he's got that vibe. Yeah. He's got that vibe for sure. Uh, this film had a $2 million budget uh, with $900,000 coming from Telefilm Canada and the Ontario Film Development Corporation pledging $700,000. Uh, this was nominated for an Independent Spirit Award for Best Foreign Film. Right. Funny it was considered foreign. Why do you got to say it that way? Why do well, you got to say it that way? This one's a little inaccessible by today's standards. It's very 90s. It's very um, indie. The Sweet Hereafter is a much more contemporary feeling. Mm. I re- that's the one that we really don't line up. That's with, I really have. like The Sweet Hereafter, and it's the kind of movie that gets in your head, and you can't believe what you're watching because it's, it's very mm. different, And but it's it's somehow like satisfying, even though it's off the tracks mm. with, the, with the, and the tragedy Literally. and the bus. And, yeah. yeah, it's, it's very, it very good. involves a... Uh, 
Brian went in arms crossed, I guess, for what? It involves a school bus full of children crashing. Oh, that's a, so it's a, a it's a romp. It's, it's a, a common. It's a good time. It's a, it's a uh, warms the cockles. I get it. Okay. Um, so I kind of pulled a Brian because I, and that's not a compliment. You're jumping in front of Anderson? Oh, I thought it was my turn. Uh, oh, oh, sorry, sorry. Oh, that no, would that. be pulling a Brian. <laughs> Absolutely. Brian, yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I was going the wrong way. Please, this is way better. Please. The longest you. episode we've ever done. Uh, Dogma 95 was a, uh, a manifesto. Oh, I, have, I have like it was in that. He played an angel. No, it's different. Very different. Dogma 95 was this new <laughs> type of filmmaking that was trying to, uh, that, that uh, a number of uh, directors tried to implement, uh, namely uh, Lars von Trier. And, and it was uh, to make uh, film accessible to all. Anyone can make, not to watch, but to make. Because like that, really? that's been a, there's been a barrier to entry for making movies for uh, since the beginning. So right? it was made on like a camcorder? Only, only the aristocrats right, could sure. make movies in the beginning, like the richest of the rich. And uh, there's long been, and now kind of with the iPhones, that we're finally there, even though Netflix has a bunch of rules and whatnot implemented where you can you have to have a certain level of camera, which, which kind of takes oh, back step. But no, Dogma 95 was all about... Um, yeah, like actors, like you had to shoot on location, had to be handheld. Uh, you had to like, if if like uh, you had a pregnant person in the in the movie, they had to be pregnant. They couldn't wear prosthetics. Wow. And then Harmony Corinne came along and oh. he made a Dogma 95 film. I still don't understand how he got it signed off on, but he made something called Julian Donkey Boy, which is- I remember that. Very art house. Yep. Not as art house as tra Trash Humpers. Which is also a, a, a Harmony Korine movie, but Julian Donkey Boy is Based memorable. Based on the title, Trash Uppers, Gina, what do you think it's about? Um, people that have sex with trash? Yeah, that's kind of the problem yeah. with the Is movies. this kind of a gummo vibe? No, it's, I mean, it's it's the same director, same writer, <laughs> yeah. but. So, yes. This one's <laughs> dirtier somehow. No. <laughs> There's no such thing as dirtier because than Because of the gummo. camcorder. I mean, just look at the footage. Look at the footage here. The, yeah, I, I get it. And that's Julian Donkey Boy there, and he's yep. uh, got severe autism or something going on. His father is is really horrific, played by Werner Herzog, uh, which is uh, <laughs> enjoyable. And then Chloe Sevigny kind of, uh, of course. brings it all into focus, and she's kind of like, she at least she's recognizable, gives us some kind of balance. Sure. Uh, however, she's playing a pregnant woman, and uh, she's wearing prosthetics. You say, was she kinda, allowed to be pregnant? Yeah, so he kind of, kind of people say that Harmony Korine killed uh, Dogma 95 with, with this movie. Mm -hmm. But Julian Donkey Boy. Spud from uh, Trainspotting. Yes, he is, he is in there. He's playing he's, he's he's the Julian, titular he's, Julian. He's playing Julian Donkey Speaking Boy. of Werner Herzog, there's a funny Instagram account where they, um, it's commercials, uh, Werner Herzog's Sad Beige Clothing for Sad Beige Children. Mm -hmm. And I just thought you guys would appreciate does that. Does he like, yeah, did, that, did, does he read it or somebody oh, a woman sounds like, who sounds like him. A woman who yeah, sounds like she's, him. It's very funny. Interesting. Yeah, anyway. Love, um, I love him. As I forgot character. about Julian Donkey Boy. I can't say I recommend it. I, I wouldn't. But I mean, it's come up on the on list too. Like recently, it came up on a list. I, I think it was an indecent proposal or something. <laughs> Wait, what? Yeah. Do you, we did we do in top five indecent proposals? And I think it was. I was watching a clip of Julian Donkey Boy just out of the blue, and That's I think familiar. that. Yeah, it, he he like has his son to put on his wife's. I, I don't want to get yeah. into it, but yeah, it's it's a tough watch. It's a tough watch. Julian Donkey Boy. <laughs> um, I'll tell you in, in Brian fashion, this is what I was modeling Please. Brian, what I didn't go with because okay. it is bad and it is stupid and okay. I didn't want to put my name okay. on it. Um, I I don't know. <laughs> Again, if anyone has a shot of ever even heard of this, I'm going with Anderson. Do you remember a little movie called Farinelli Il Castrato? No. Don't. Good. This is what I didn't go with. It's a it's a it's a bad movie about uh, it was supposed to be based on a true story of these two brothers uh, from God knows way back in the olden times, and that one of them's castrated because they did to children who could sing soprano, and mm. but it's that's not really the point. And nobody really cares. And then all I remember from it is like he's this big star, and then he gets like with all the women, all the groupies. But then when it's time to seal the deal, he slips out, and his brother slips in. That's all I remember. Hmm. Didn't go with that one. Instead, a movie that I'd like to see again, a little predictable and maybe a little on the nose, but really into it when it came out. Uh, the Last Supper, 1995. Mm. Uh, Cameron Diaz, Courtney B. Vance, Annabeth Gish. Wow. This, this is a, this is a, this is a I love The Last Supper. Do you, you remember this, Jason right? Jason Alexander as the uh, hamburger eating oh while my. smoking a cigarette. I forgot. <laughs> about that so the premise i'll just read you because this is this is pretty accurate what from what it what it has online uh stranded student pete gets a lift from a racist trucker uh named zach and repays the fair favor by inviting him for dinner with his roommates when zach praises hitler and pulls a knife at the table mm. the roommates kill him mm -hmm. rationalizing their actions as a favor to humanity they bury zach in the yard and begin to invite 
other offensive types over for similar situations. Grave to it. And and as you can you'll get, I'm sure, it starts with, of course, who wouldn't kill this person to what have you guys become? Yeah, kind of, this is movie is so like now. Yes. Right? It's so yes. this is the type of movie like it's kind of lines up with a menu, uh yes. glass onion to an yes. extent. Like it's if it's, this it's movie is more fun. now than it was then, for sure. Absolutely. It's uh, So would you call it like a comedy horror? It's a dark or? comedy. Yeah. Um, it doesn't get real bloody, if I remember no, right. It, no, it's more about the... Re- graves. It's more about who everybody becomes. Yeah, it's it's about ultimate power and how it corrupts and how like you you need a new target, which yes. is all like with with everyone, you know, a lot of animals and, and just monsters were canceled in the beginning, and then it got to this weird place where people are like, I need more blood, and they were just trying to find any like this guy tweeted about something twenty years ago. Yes, it, yes. you're so it's right. Similar to the, all that that's going on. I'm so glad you said that. I don't know if it's available for streaming, but you, Anderson couldn't be more right that this movie is more relevant now than when it came out. It I think it was available. ahead of ahead of its time. It's available to stream on multiple blood. Platforms. And also, it's the, the type of news. movie that you would we would call a COVID movie because it all take kind of takes place yeah. in one, one house room. and like yeah. it could all be mm. tested. This is the kind of movie that's ripe for being uh, remade. <laughs> you know what? The French should remake this. Uh, they take a take a page out of our book. Oh yeah, right? uh, you know, instead of mm. re- us remaking there. That's uh, right. Uh, all right, we'll take a quick break here. Why? Barbara. Why would we? You don't know how the show works. I understand that it's, <laughs> it hasn't been going that long for you. It's new to you. This uh, show. We're gonna take a quick break and we'll be back. Brian, why don't you throw? While I, uh, Coming up next, there. conclusion to our top five lists after this. Welcome back. Time to hit up with number three on my list. Had I been going with movie that I just loved, indies from the 90s, I surely would have had Reservoir Dogs. Oh, sure. Uh, but another movie that launched a huge career uh, in, in the wake of uh, the film, Roger and Me. Oh, Roger my God, of course. Me. That was the beginning for him. Uh, Roger Me, directed by Michael Moore. <laughs> so, it, what? What? I don't know if I consider this like an, an art house film. Art house doc. Really? You don't? This is like a true independent really? movie. I mean, it's independent, but uh, I mean, it's, it's pretty accessible. I feel like most, it's not doing anything experimental other than maybe lying. Oh, you know what? Maybe you're onto something. Because wow. this is one of the first like true propagandas of the modern age. Oh, true. Like not manipulating since, the audience. Since like the German films of uh, you know, oh, wow. World War II. Ushered in a new have era. Have we seen such of, propaganda? Uh, ushered in a new era of, uh, yeah. of uh, documentary. Yeah, maybe yeah. that's where you're going at. Were the okay. lines a little more blurred? Very blurred. I mean, like the guy who he's trying to interview throughout the whole movie has said, and he has people that cor- corroborate this, like, yeah, I was willing to sit down with him from the beginning. And there was, <laughs> but, so, there was, but he didn't have a movie. If it came out later that he did actually talk to him and he's like, oh, it was, it was part of something else or it was like part of a junket or a press conference or whatever. But it's like, yeah, you did actually talk to the guy. <laughs> But you're right in that it launched him. It completely did. Mm. Uh, yes, what well, I have lots of information here about mm. it. He started, uh, Moore started to uh, make the documentary in 1984. He had no experience in filmmaking or uh, any funds to produce the film. And uh, to get the money, he filed a successful wrongful termination lawsuit against his previous employer. employer and he also scrounged up money by mortgaging his house. He sold most of his belongings and arranged a... Three-year series of weekly bingo games. Oh. Yeah, Do you think he had to sell all of his puffer bingo vests? Bingo games. That's interesting. I think he kept a few. Okay. I mean, as evidenced by, you know, by looking at the man. Right. It's yeah. a great documentary. No, you're right. This is, you know what kind of a documentary? It's a selfie documentary. Oh. They should call him that. I don't That's think they do. Where, like, the subject is... Is you? The, yeah. Is the creator? So- oh. Sorry. What? I just realized who's, who's making a selfie documentary. Yeah, I'm really struggling. <laughs> <laughs> Sitting at the table with... With a selfie documentary, but it, maker. It, it, it you know they 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 what do they say? They walked so Brian could run. Thank you. That's Aww. right. I, I stand on the shoulder of giants. On the shoulders of mm-hmm. Michael right. Moore and and all the Emma's Morgan Spurlock. Sure. All the other, all the, all the greats. greats. Yeah. All right, Roger and me, Brian. Interesting. Yeah, Roger Interesting. And me. All right. Uh, my mine get more accessible as I go up too because I'm just going off. Actually, that's not true. Look at number three. Yeah, Jesus mine are Christ. all over the place. <laughs> all right, my number three uh, is a. It's my turn. Yeah. Yes. Let's get through this. Uh, let's say, I'm sorry. I did, yeah, here we go. Sorry, I got really excited to be here and might have no, I love monopolized it. the time. I love it. I just uh, I realized that uh, oh, people like long shows. Okay. Uh, Lumiere. Oh, stop, now I feel like I'm an asshole. I, I feel like I uh, offended you by saying that we've got to hurry it up. No, not well, at all. What are we yeah, some, nothing, I, there's nothing I love more than like canceling shit. So let's. <laughs> no, no wonder you good. and Corolla work so excuse. well. <laughs> together Lumiere. Lumiere and Company is a 1995 uh, mm. documentary this is the most accessible 
<laughs> well, I, I felt like it was getting. Wait, wait till you see the the, the top two are very fairly accessible. But uh, what's interesting about Lumiere and Company is it really gives you an idea of what the uh, first of all what all these different directors are capable of when they have a bunch of rules implemented. Mm. I've cited this movie plenty plenty of times on this cannot program. Stream. Cannot stream uh, huh. because uh, it really does kind of shine a light on who could do the most with the least. So they brought these Lumiere cameras uh, back to life and they refurbished them and they brought them from like the turn of the century where the Lumiere brothers probably invented film. In fact, if I put my money down, like they invented cinema as we know sure. it today and Edison stepped in with his strong men and had them like his strong, he actually had strong arms over in France breaking these cameras. Are and you stuff. serious? Yeah, trying Edison to Edison was a real POS. He was a real piece of I shit, mean, yeah. think about poor Nikola Tesla. Did you ever see that uh, Drunk History with Chris no. Glover playing Edison? No. John C. Riley plays Tesla? I'd it's one of the greatest things ever <laughs> put good. on the internet. Um, I wouldn't know because my theater background, I did a show called Tesla Electric. It was oh. experimental VR back in the day, but you were saying? VR. Yeah, Back what, what we thought VR was. I shudder. Yeah, it was pretty bad. So each director, I think they had 30 seconds. We got like Peter Greenaway, Francis uh, Giroud. Yeah, uh, you got uh, you got uh, who else? John Borman's one of them. Uh, you Spike got Lee. Spike Lee is in there, and I've cited his and how he just did not even give a shit or try at all. He just he just set up the camera on a tripod or sticks as we call them. And it was just like his baby crying, oh. and he's like, "Come on, say he's something, say something." And then you got you got. Uh, you got David Lynch over there. And what he did, if you have a second, watch what David Lynch, because you're not allowed to cut either. So that was part of the exercise. Right, because you, you weren't couldn't. allowed to edit. So David like, Lynch you, found ways around that. He put it on a, on a tripod. He spun it like on a lazy Susan. And he had like sheets. So he had a 360 set going on. And he had sheets that were like, he, he lit on fire and they would burn. <sighs> it's, oh, I want to see that. And what he does is phenomenal. Some of them, you know, Arthur Penn's got one. That's the one that really stands out. It's been a while since I saw this in the theater and then I've, I've cherry picked some of them as well. But it's really interesting to see what people were using back at the turn of the century and what modern day directors, at least in 1995, were doing with that technology. That's so cool. And I love that. You know, this is like their, the version of, oh yeah, sure, you can sing with auto-tune, but what about just you and a guitar? Yeah. You know, like this really shows what it they can do. It shows what yeah. they can do when they actually put that. And Spike Lee could have done something much better. I, I don't think he really made the most of it, the opportunity. He's like, yeah, maybe he's you know, in the middle of another project. I don't know. I hold it against him though. Yeah. It upsets me and it will probably continue to upset me forever. Understood. I do want to see that. Well, I see Hellstrom. The guy that did a Hachi. What if we do this on YouTube or something? So many directors. I think oh, there's like yeah. 35 directors. But you know what you can do is YouTube. Just like, you know, type in David Lynch Lumiere and come in, it'll pop right up. You know? Oh, that's, I am intrigued. Yeah. Um, so I think that we could all, whether you like it or not or whatever, I think we could all agree that Pulp Fiction is a quintessential art house movie. We, I didn't know who Quentin Tarantino was when I that movie that. came out. Yeah. So um, in that vein, that's kind of my way of softening the blow of my next pick. Um, yes, it became sort of a touchstone. Yes, it's dirty. And yes, we all remember it with kind of look back in horror. Kids. Anderson loves kids. It's got to be kids. Mm. It was what, 1995. Five. Yeah, you're right. Uh, and it's, it's, it's shot in such a, uh, what's a guerrilla style, all scripted, didn't know it at the time. Um, and I, I actually had to double check that it was cause it doesn't feel that way. It feels, it's very dirty. Mm -hmm. It's very raw. Whoever created euphoria has to have worshiped at the altar of kids. In my opinion, I can't be in the same room. I think I was just talking about this on, on the show with you last week, but I can't be in the same room when euphoria is on. Cause mm. I get like PTSD from my days of that kind of lifestyle. It makes me like nauseous. Like so, I get sick. So you can't be in the same room with someone watching Requ Requiem for a Dream then? That one fucked so me much. up. Yeah, that one really fucked me up. Like I people in the aisles like having panic attacks. I've said this on the show to Brian plenty of times. Uh, forgive me if you've heard me, but like that's the only movie I can remember where like the lights came up and I was still just sitting there and, and I, I really, I was almost like frozen and I was afraid to smoke. I'm like, smoking's gonna lead to other things. <laughs> <laughs> I can absolutely see that. But Kids is great. Yeah. And it's a movie that's really hard to track down. And at the time, is it? I think it's not streaming anywhere last huh. we checked. Because huh. uh, this is written by the same guy that did Julian Donkey Bar. Harmony, right. That's Harmony right. Kareem. Of course, Chloe Sauvigny is in it. A very young, pre, barely, basically prepubescent Rosario Dawson. Yes. She's great in it. Too. Um, They're all great in it. You, and it's like, like it, love it, hate it. You can't look away from it. it We've never seen anything like it. I, I don't know if this is on any of your lists. I hope I'm not stepping on anything. To me, it's the anti-slacker. Fuck. Agreed, because these kids weren't slackers. They were oh, no. Did I, okay, good. What happened? I could, slacker's not on I, Brian's list. <laughs> okay, thank you, because I was so over the whole so genre of people that loved slacker. Mm. I'm so over it. But it's kids, got moments. Yeah, but but kids is like, in my opinion, it's the well-done version of that. <laughs> yeah. 
I, I, I agree. Uh, I love, and, and it, it upsets me to no one that this movie was not, and it continues to upset me that kids aren't allowed to see kids and they're the ones that should be seeing kids, even this though they'll turn it around and they'll viewing. try and make it cool. And yeah. like I do, I still smoke when I smoke. I still smoke like Casper did sometimes <laughs> like backwards. Between the second and third. Yeah, and yeah, I, yeah. With my hand going out. Right, Yo, it's right. dumb hot outside. Like I, I, I love, <laughs> I don't love Tully and his actions, but you know, that's a character that will live on forever. You don't I, tell people it smells like butterscotch, right? No, no, <laughs> not quite that. I'm not quite that enamored, but this is the type of movie that would really, you know, scare kids straight 100%. and ironically they're the ones who weren't allowed to see it yep yeah, we're just talking about violence and how mm -hmm. like it's completely uh, neutered for children and they don't get to see that violence, violence has, has consequences, consequences. Right. so we're like priming these kids for the first like seven eight years of their life to like watch this bullshit where someone takes a fucking anvil to the head and then they just get up and go oh that hurt shake it's it like, off it's like no 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 that fucking causes severe like we should show them yeah. not like necessarily like splitting heads you know like crushing skulls sure. but like have, like, the difference between PG and PG-13 is like a guy gets punched in a PG movie. He gets punched. Nothing happens. PG-13, there's a little blood on his... That, it should be... Uh, no, you're right. I, I feel like we, we, we need to re-examine that. Mm. I don't know if I'm the kind to do it. But I don't think you're the kind to do it. Get some grant money, maybe. <laughs> start doing some studies. Great choice. I love that, uh, kids. Number two for me. Brian uh, pleasures himself to it. He, <laughs> he said it on the show. I'm not yeah, saying anything. They're no, all coming up. <laughs> I was going to go with Clerks, of course, on my yeah, all-time sure. favorites. I wasn't even supposed to be here today. I went with the difference, uh, ulti, uh, ulti, ulti, ultra cheap, uh, sort of made with friends movie. People forget, because it became such a phenomenon, and this is the horror movie mm. I was alluding to earlier, it was such a phenomenon. People forget The Blair Witch Project <sighs> was a tr indie film. $60,000 budget, what did it make right. in the box? People don't forget that it was indie. Well, well I mean, we all saw it. I by the time I saw it, it was in mainstream yeah, theater. Yeah, it made its way to mainstream. Is what I'm saying. Like people forget. I think that I don't. I think if you ask the average person who saw it back in the day, they would have no idea that it was like made by the, in, an independent film. It was because it might. It was distributed at the, some point. Because by the quintessential independent film. Yeah. So many, so many people have made uh, source footage or found footage movies yeah. since. It launched a whole fucking movement. And we never heard from them again. Yeah. I have that written down. The careful yeah. what you wish for, because they became instantly hugely successful. The filmmakers and the actor actors, and um, I say that the them, actors are hugely successful. Well, they were part of a phenomenon. Yeah, they I mean, they're they're star rose fast and yeah. furious. They were on like, like Letterman, Zeitgeist. yeah, right. Yeah, they were, and then what? And then nothing. Yeah, I've I've watched. Actually, you know, uh, Heather Donahue is out of the business. She retired from acting. Her screams were just in tar, though. I was telling you. Oh yeah, he sure. actually. Uh, uh, he, uh, Todd Field actually used the screams from Blair Witch to okay. implement, put them in with what, what uh, Linda was, was, was here. Lydia was here, sorry. I want to watch Blair Witch again. It's been years. It's st still good. I think it probably had lost all luster with the infusion of... Uh, sure, and of screams. course we all know the ending and everything, but I remember the most intense part of the movie was when they lost the map. The that was the part that scared me. That was dumb. I liked it. I forget the losing of the map. He threw it away. There's a movie called Snow on the Bluff, which was a, a, a found footage movie, which I absolutely love. And they, the guerrilla uh, uh, marketing for that that movie was genius, where they would they were leaving. They were, it, it's about this guy who carjacks these dumb rich kids who come into the neighborhood to buy drugs, and he just carjacks them, and he takes their camera that they had, and he just starts shooting his own shit, and then he like gets rid of them, and then he's just like shooting his own shit with his camera. And, it's, and they were, the, 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 the guerrilla campaign was to put it in a manila envelopes, and they were putting blood on it and dropped it off at like a police station. <laughs> And shit. <laughs> now it's good they use took a resources. page. They took a page. I don't. That was like long after uh, Blair Witch. So they took a player uh, a page out of Blair Witch. Right. I, you know Max Krasny, who yes. like he was uh, guy over West when I came in up in the radio with him. Real real character. Love Max. He's he's still like uh, one of the main guys over West one. Last I checked. Really really good friend. And uh, we co produced a a uh, a radio show for All on the Bench back in the day. And he came across this. Manila envelope with this tape in it, and he says, "Hey, uh, people are talking about this. They say it's fucking real. Do you want to like stay after work and 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 watch this?" So we had a little VHS player in the studio. It was where you and I met. It's the same studio, but oh, wow. up up the hall. And so the show ended at ten. We said goodbye to Scott Farrell, the the host, and uh, and then we put this thing in, and we we're just sitting there watching it in this little TV in the studio, in the radio studio, TV. and it freaked me the fuck out. And like the, we had this thing that would happen when the air conditioning would kick on, like all the tiles, like the, the soundproof tiles up top <laughs> were like, and that was like really freaking me out until 
the film nerd in me picked up on the fact that they're running from their, for their lives and pulling focus on 16 millimeter cameras yeah. that are heavy, awkward, and they're actually using them properly. And mm. you don't do that if you're yeah. running. For, so I'm like, oh, this is bullshit. Well, you're and Max good. Is like, no, dude, I think it's real. I'm like, I want it to be real, but no, this is this is genius. But and that so was, thank you, Cloverfield. For taking that idea and running with it. Wasn't that the whole vibe of Cloverfield? Any number of, yeah. A yeah. paranormal activity. Right. Which is the most successful. Chronicle. Paranormal activity is the most successful the movie uh, financial, financially ever made when you do the. Uh, oh, the, per, because the it costs nothing to make. Yeah, it costs yeah. like barely anything. And wow. the amount of money that it made was astronomical. Mm. Amazing. But yeah, it was really, really fun trying to figure out. The film nerd in me loved his puzzling it together and I felt so good about myself when I'm like, oh, no, 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 that's fake. And it's funny how many films went to such great lengths afterwards like Chronicle comes to mind where you've seen Chronicle? Mm-mm. Chronicle's good, but they go, at some point it's about superpowers happening to ordinary kids and at one point it's there's It's supposed a, to be found footage. At oh, one yeah. point that's there's a, uh, a fist fight in the sky and how do you found footage that? <laughs> they have like uh, iPhones and tablets like swirling wow. around yeah. them. Wow. It's quite a, quite a leap. Interesting. Yeah. And it was unnecessary. <laughs> unnecessary. All right. Movie. My, my number two, I could interchange one and two easily, but this is the order I ended up putting them in. So I, this is one of my favorite movies in general, um, but yet it's going in the number two spot. I think Brian may have seen this. Because I know these are not, I don't know if this is really your vibe, but we're going to find out. Right. House of Yes. No. The House of No. <laughs> Do you remember The House was, of Yes? I have not seen. Oh, it's one of my favorite movies. It's, um, it's uh, Parker Posey, Freddie Prince Jr., Josh Hamilton, Tori Spelling. Why Tori Spelling, you ask? Do a little bit of digging. Aaron Spelling financed the whole okay, movie. Okay, makes sense. Um, this is... This is such a crazy movie. Remember when you made fun of Brian earlier because you thought he was writing essays for his friends just to like read? Yeah. This movie. Which I can see. That, I can would, be see funny. Doing that. that would be very funny. This movie had such an impact on me that I rewrote it as an absurdist play oh. and forced my friends against their will to read it. This is not part of a class? No. Oh. This was, I took it? my friends to dinner. They thought I was going to tell them something like hmm. I won the lottery. I got married and I handed them each a script and I was so excited and they were furious. Mm-hmm. Um, this is. This is a bizarre movie. I loved, and I still do, these dark, moody movies with these twists. And of course, you know, I'm going to say this right now. Party Girl, not on my list. Mm. Love Parker Posey. Party Girl didn't make the list. She had to be in every, every uh, indie movie. She was the girl. Yeah. But I can I just read you the first half paragraph from, from the premise just so we can all get on I want to hear the first half paragraph from your adaptation. <laughs> it was <laughs> awesome. Happened. I wrote it on a plane. Okay. Thanksgiving 1983, Marty Pascal, he's Josh Hamilton, uh, travels from New York to McLean, Virginia to visit his family, mother, uh, younger brother, and twin sister, Jackie O. Should they call her Jackie O? Mm. So the twins are Freddie Prince Jr. and uh, Parker Posey. Uh, Recently released from a psych hospital, by the way, and they're obsessed with Jackie Kennedy and they're obsessed with with the JFK assassination. Okay. And she dresses like her and she talks like her. Uh, Marty surprises the family that he's engaged and he's engaged with this donut waitress and that's Tori Spelling and she's very sweet, whatever. Jackie O, Parker Posey, doesn't like it, mm-hmm. wants to break him up. Meanwhile, it becomes apparent that Marty and Jackie O are involved in a very incestuous relationship Ooh. and they, they it, that started when they Jesus. were teenagers. When is that revealed? Uh, halfway mark. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jackie O convinces Marty to play their favorite childhood game which I can tell you is a reenactment of the assassination mm. using a gun. And um, that, that was how, that was their the foreplay horses? as oh. being uh, incestuous brother and sister. Was this it's bef- crazy. Or after David Cronenberg's crash. Cause it's, it sounds like it's got some. This is 97, so right around the same time. Oh, is it? The reenactment uh, element. It's, it's, it, it's 62 with the critics, 77 with the audience. This movie just, I don't know. It just did it for me. Yeah, I, I can see why I would look at the poster and have no interest in ever seeing it because it's not marketed to me. But it might, it, from everything you're saying, it's it's, it's peaking the interest. I, I love a dark family secret, and this movie delivers. The rentable across multiple platforms, yeah, Amazon and Apple TV. Oh, uh, Crash came out the year before. Mm. Maybe that Crash inspired them. Well, House of Yes, by the way, was a play. Okay. Oh, so, there you go. So you never so know how these so things work out. Yeah, Crash, Crash, was, was, Crash, was, Crash was a play. Yeah, right. <laughs> They all get in bumper cars. Predated. Uh, it used to, it used to uh, be on, on, on stages long before movies were uh, sure, sure. nothing. Crash. Number one for me. Long before cars. Uh, I, I, uh, I, Wait, I didn't do my number, my number uh, door. Yeah. Oh yeah. You did it? I didn't. I'm sorry. No, it's all right. I thought, it's okay. You're, you're eager. I get it. I thought it I'm was the, the, 
Oh, because we're talking about Blair Witch. That's uh, how you got on the movie you were talking yeah, about. It's hard to tell because I talk so much about every guy, yeah, everyone's true. pick. I thought that was your pick. Even movies I haven't seen, I start, I start, you know, pontificating. Got so it's, it's, it. it's, it's uh, okay. Number two for me, uh, In the Company of Men. It's a, it's, it's mm. Neil Butte's, uh, uh first movie. <laughs> it's his feature length film. Uh, first feature, a, he's, he's a, He's a, a fine stand-up uh, Mormon fella, oh, yeah. and he made this very, very dark <laughs> film about how men actually can behave, not all men, but uh, and how they can follow, which is also one of the very, mm. very um, disturbing parts of this movie. Uh, this yeah. movie's insane. You've seen this, yes? I, I read the script in college as part of a class before I saw the film. Really? I didn't know that. I never knew that. I believe yeah. Neil Butte went to my alma mater, and oh, yeah? so we kind of had like a like a pen palish relationship. Very nice guy, but really? very pen palish. Yeah. Like it, it, he was trying to make you one of the many. <laughs> That's right. Unclear. One of the many wives. Uh, but he was, um, Unclear. he told me to keep sweet at the end. Is that not? Oh, no, very clear. Kidding. Coming oh, into focus. Oh, but, uh, this, we yeah. fuck around. We choke around. Not the bees. He's responsible for that. Not the bees. I'm remaking oh, a wicker him? man. Oh, yeah. you know that. Neil Butte. I for, I can't believe I I just forgot about so it. So the right company here. of men is just a, it's it's quite uh, a it's a, it's high a cynical look at uh, male behavior. Yeah, Indeed. so these, these two guys, toxic masculinity. One's, well a, one's an alpha, one's a beta. Uh, they they fly into this town to get this new office that's under the umbrella of their of this company that they work for up and running. It's never quite clear. That's not the point of the story. They're just in this office building and they're treating people that are below them like absolute garbage. The beta following the alpha uh, is possibly the most disturbing part of the movie if it weren't for the fact that they both decide to target a woman, find a woman, and they they want to both date her without her knowing about each other and that they're friends, and then at the end say, hey, look, we know that you've been like two-timing or dating both of us, mm -hmm. and then they land on a woman who happens to be hard of hearing, mm -hmm. which makes it all the harder to watch. Uh, I believe Ebert, who I don't love to, to quote, but he, he uh, said it was akin to watching a, a, a lion take down its a prey, like on one of those nature shows. Bye -bye. And uh, on the company I met, it's, it was not yep. accessible and it was b definitely based more on the, the actions and the motivations of the characters rather than the characters getting what they want. Mm. So uh, very, I would, I would imagine that this that was the de facto debut, certainly the, the lead debut for uh, uh, Aaron Eckhart. Yes, he Aaron Eckhart. Great, great success. We haven't course. seen him in a while. He's like semi-retired. He's in a TV show that my mom watches. What's going on with Aaron? That's interesting. <laughs> I can't say that I've seen him recently. He won for this role an Independent Spirit Award for Best Debut Performance. Oh, oh wow. so dislikable, but hilarious, too. I watched I remember this. not liking, like, I remember disliking the man. That's how good he You're was. You're supposed to, yeah. That's how good he was in the role. Oh, mm -hmm. you disliked him yeah. when you saw him I was like, beyond yeah, this. I was like, yeah, oh, that guy, I don't like him. Uh, uh, Aaron Eckhart. I was, uh, quick quick search on Aaron Eckhart. Where has he been? Because he went on to be a pretty big, like, uh, oh, he's still in shit. Yeah, that thing, I mean, Thank You for Not Smoking was a big, I thought that was kind of breakout -y for him too, wasn't it? Uh, probably for mainstream. This is not yeah. a mainstream film, so. Um, yeah, he's still in actually... stuff that my mom watches. I was dead nuts. Like, the first lady, he's in there. He oh. plays Gerald Ford. Look at that. There you go. I'm sad, to, I'm sad to say to you, I don't mean to shit on your point, but I got to get back into the swing of things. Sure. Mm. He had been in many movies before Thank You for Smoking. He was in Any Given Sunday, right. uh, Nurse Betty. He was okay. Aaron Brockovich. He was in a lot of movies. Oh, yeah. He was the, the biker guy in Nurse mm -hmm. Brock, Aaron Brockovich. He was in Double Jeopardy, the TV movie. So, yeah, he wasn't like, no one really knew who he was uh, before the old. Uh, for the only in the company of men. That was his first probably lead role, I would imagine. Mm -hmm. Yes, it was. Okay, Brian, it's your turn. Oh, boy, exciting. Uh, number one for me, uh, would have gone with, had I gone with just my favorite in news sure. of all time, uh, Swingers. Sure. Love, love Swingers. Sh Saw absolutely. that in an art house film, an art house uh, cinema out here. Independent. And that was my freshman year of, yeah, of college. And I remember a, a friend I had made in the dorms, God, this was like, first month or two of living in LA, yeah. going to school at USC. This guy, the film guy is like, dude, you guys see this movie called Swingers. It's all, the guys are hilarious. They say money, this and money, that and, and baby in Vegas. And I'm like, all right. I mean, it doesn't, doesn't sound good, but I'll see it. I guess <laughs> went to the art house cinema, fell in love. And I don't know if you know this about me, Gina, over the years of working together, but I will do extensive research on things that I love. I hadn't noticed. Yeah. And so, uh, I, I read an interview, from 1996 with uh, John Favreau, the writer of right. Swingers, of course, the star. He uh, he explained no one wanted to make the movie because it had so many weird idiosyncrasies, like in jokes to the baby, the baby, right. you're so money. And he's like, Vince Vaughn and I would, would actually end up going on these pitch sessions with D Doug Lyman, the director, and 
acting out the movie so people could see what the rhythm they could see what it was and it worked otherwise you're reading it and you're like what the fuck is this yeah another movie where i bet if you read it you go what the fuck is this i don't this is not going to work as a movie is swingers your your number one or no not my number one it's hard to follow i'm making i'm making connections you're building bridges Uh uh-huh Oh. Never heard of that one. I don't know it. No, he's he just said that he's building bridges. Oh my God. He does that all the time. It's very hard to follow Brian when he's uh, got the mic. When I'm waxing, I'm waxing yeah. right now, baby. Woo! I'm gonna uh, look up building bridges. And I might assign that to you just <laughs> just as punishment. <laughs> you know it's a movie. Number one is another movie that I have no <laughs> doubt many established studio executives read the script and were like, "This is unmakeable. What is, what is this nonsense?" Shit. It's a movie. It's one, two, three, four, five movies called Building Bridges since yes, twenty since two thousand eight. Once wow, week. which is the lowest rated? That's what you got to watch. <laughs> Number one for me, mm. built being John Malkovich. Oh sure, being John Malkovich. Well, well uh, the writing debut of Charlie Kaufman. I have not seen this. The directing, <laughs> t- yes, sure. yes, the directorial Anderson, debut. Anderson, that was Spike very Jones. strange. Uh, yes, this won two Independent Spirit Awards, Best First Screenplay, and Best First Feature. Yeah, this movie was amazing. It was bizarre. awesome, it, it, but it was bizarre. And I can't you see like an older executive reading the script and being like, I, "What the fuck? What am I?" Reading? I just don't yeah. see it. Yeah. yeah. What do you mean third and a half st- uh, floor? <laughs> so is Malkovich Malkovich, or is he someone else? Is he actually in the movie? Movie? Yeah. Are we just talking about him like a? Is it a lookalike? Oh wow! Well, he sue us. Yeah, yeah that's even if he's in it, he could sue us. <laughs> great, fun. great number. I, one. I, I remember seeing this in the theater and and really being impressed by just the left turns it took yep. when I expect it zogged when I thought it would zig. Yep. You know what I mean? Everything also was saw this in everything was different and unique and original, and I just appreciated it so much. I would Amen. like to. I should have said this at the beginning, probably since uh, our producer has, has ditched us today. Mm-hmm. Uh, I am doing his job, which means keeping track of lists and whatnot as well. So that's what I'm doing over here. I'm we doing a lot just of busy work. Give it to you we later. Send it to you. I did. I've tried that many okay. weeks with this man, and. <laughs> He's like, I'll get it to you in a bit. And then he just doesn't bother. Copy so. and paste. That's true. Okay. All right. Uh, go uh, ahead. Thank God Swingers is not your number one no, art really. house film. Because, I mean, it's, it's, it's I mean, embarrassing it enough oh, stop that, it. that I do a show with a man who says that his number one most confusing movie he's ever seen. is. Something. I didn't say that. Yeah, it was your number one. Is what? Number one. It was your number one. Was I don't it think that's number? true. Is what? What number? Find out what number <laughs> it was. Because I know you keep tedious notes that are uh, easily searchable because you wrote them down. So it's important to you. I got to know. It's been talked about on well, this program. One, I don't be, even think that it's an art house one. film. <laughs> is it your number one? Let's find out. Listen, it's not important. Is it your number, number one? Okay. Pulp Fiction is the most confusing movie Brian has ever seen At in his life. At the time. <laughs> Why? I thought, for... I, thought, I thought he was dead. <laughs> Why is he back? Wait a minute. I'm confused. Well, time jumping. I get it. The time jumping At really time, broke his brain. <laughs> no, I was 17 years old. I wasn't ready for No. I was 15. It doesn't Wait, matter, no. Brian. No, I was watching Deer Hunter when I was nine. I wasn't confused. <laughs> Actually, I was 16. I still have never seen Deer Hunter. Uh, you're not missing much. Okay. How dare you? You're missing like three a movies in one. You're missing an extended sequence where they drink in a bar. <laughs> it's a great wedding scene. Yeah. It's a great wedding scene. And it, Fredo's in it, right? Yeah, oh, fuck yeah. yeah. Fun fact. Did you know every film oh, he starred in got was nominated, nominated, nominated for Best Picture? Cameo? Wow. Yeah. Five films. And wasn't he with Meryl Streep? They were... There's a really good short documentary called. Is it that short? I thought it was like feature. You, you assigned no, it to me. No, it's like 45 minutes. Uh, it's called uh, I Knew It Was You Rediscovering John Cazale. Ooh. And uh, it features Meryl Streep and all of his co-stars. It's, uh, it's good. Would John Cazale ever be in a movie with John C- Jim Caviezel? No, they wouldn't have overlapped. Shit. He died many, many years before. I feel like I'm part of a, a Scrabble debate. <laughs> Number one for me, real quick. Uh, is uh, a movie called Arizona Dream. Which Arizona Dream. I absolutely love. Uh, I've mentioned it on the Super Program many, many a times. A young Jonathan it, Depp. It makes me very upset Ooh. that people, not more people know about Arizona well, you couldn't, Dream. You couldn't get it for a while. Remember the Warner Archives? Yeah, it was only available when, when we were doing uh, spots for Warner Arga- right. Archives, and we went down there it's and our visited, first sponsor, their, Gina. visited wow. their archives, and we saw, I'm like, I was very excited to see that Emir Kustrika's uh, Arizona Dream was there. Two hours, 22 minutes, uh, but it goes down oh, super, Good super, news. You can rent this shit. Wow. Super smooth. Is this like right after 21 Jump Street? Fairly soon after this looks like a young man. It might have been concurrent. But this is how she made more choices. Like, this is my favorite comedic role of Johnny Depp, even though he's more the straight man than anything. But uh, you got Vincent Gallo in there, Faye Dunaway, Lily Taylor, Jerry Lewis. And it's hard to even describe what the story is, especially with the bizarre open, which is amazing. Paulina Poroskova, the model? 
And yeah, Esk- Rick Ocasek's ex-wife. I don't think you call them Eskimos anymore, but Inu- uh, Inuit. Yeah, uh, it opens up with a sequence where a, a, a father is out fishing with his son, and he finds a very rare halibut, which he brings home on a sled with dogs to the igloo, and he he, he makes a balloon for his child, and a, I think he makes like a, a window. It's 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 fascinating. I, I absolutely love the open of this movie. <laughs> And still trying to figure out exactly how it relates. Two to the hours rest of and it. twenty-two minutes, I'm out. Goes down smooth, and then he makes that <laughs> balloon, and that balloon travels like uh, the, the child loses the the, the fish's bladder balloon, mm. and it travels, and we follow it, and there's a, kind of a clumsy uh, cut, uh, I would imagine, I, I would say, but uh, it follow we follow it all the way to New York, where it wakes up a sleeping Johnny Depp, uh, who's sleeping in the back of his car, and then One his strong uncle, bladder. Uh, his uncle is uh, uh, Jerry Lewis, and. Um, and it's just um, uh, people sitting around and, and saying things happening with Faye Dunaway. You saw this, right, Brian? No. You never. Well, it, was, it was inaccessible for oh, so many mad. years. It's just one of those bizarre, funny art house movies where you're like, what is the point? There's this extended scene where it's Vincent Gallo's character uh, trying giving acting a, a, a shot. He really wants to be an actor. He thinks of himself as Hollywood. <laughs> and, uh, and he does this uh, sequence from North by Northwest where he's just on stage and he's got corn stalks up and he's just like <laughs> running from the plane and he's, he's a buffoon. Uh, it's great. It's Johnny Depp and, uh, and Vincent Gallo are like pals in this. Wow. I've never heard of this. And Jerry Lewis uh, also shares the table and uh, it's, there's a, a, a very comedic uh, would-be suicide by Lily Taylor involving huh. pantyhose. Oh, and then it's like, a, turns into a bungee. It's just, oh, that's funny. It's got a it's got a great energy, great tempo to this movie. Great score. I love this movie. Is it streamable? It is across multiple platforms. Okay. You can rent this. Arizona Dream, and it's really hard to figure out what the point is or where it's going. It's all about character development and motivation and Papua New Guinea at times. <laughs> Um, okay, I'm going to give my number one, um, but before I do, I'm going to say one thing to each of you, because I listen to multiple other shows. Um, uh, Revenge of the Nerds, uh-huh. Vanilla Sky, two of my favorite movies of all time. Okay. Because I know that one was one of your favorites, or one of your guilty pleasures. Revenge of the Nerds yeah, is one a of my guilty favorite, pleasure, yeah. One of my favorite Fantastic. movies. We were allowed to watch it when we were, like, zygotes, because my mom always said, Me too. We it's were a little kids. raunchy, exactly. It's a little raunchy, but it has a good message. So oh, I memorized nice. it. I watched it my entire life. And Brian and Rape I- Rape is not a good message, though. Your mom knows that now, right? Well, but bouncy houses are great. Uh, bouncy That's houses true. are nice messages. Pies. Yeah. Um, Looks like a salad. <laughs> Was dying when you said that, and Brian and I have bonded over Vanilla Sky multiple times, and Generally everybody love it. hates us for it. Um, okay, mm. so I may have to watch it again. I don't know if this is considered an art house film, so it's not my number one. But can we please just give an She's honorable? Doing the swingers thing. I'm doing this to Brian. I, I only I just thought of it because Brian did. You guys it. come from the same show. <laughs> can something? I please give an honorable mention? Would you call Waiting for Guffman an art house movie? Yeah. Yeah, okay, so. let's all just take a moment and appreciate sure. that. Yeah. That is not my movie, though. My favorite movie, my favorite art house 90s movie is a bizarre comedy with Steve Buscemi, Catherine Keener, the other queen of the art house film. Are we doing Living in Oblivion? Yes! Oh, Dermot Thomas Mulroney, Mulroney, Living in Oblivion. Peter Dinklage, uh, James, is it Lagrosse? Lagrosse, he's been in tons of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. My favorite movie. You've obviously you've seen this. Love, love this movie. Go ahead. Go ahead. It's just, it's great. It's, it's uh, Steve Buscemi is a, a low budget director. He's trying to get this film made, and everything that can go wrong does go wrong, it's and it's very accurate. But it, but it ends so beautifully, and it's so intense, and it's so funny. I still, my friends and I will still. If I called one of my friends right now and they said hello, and I said Wanda, get me an eye patch, they'd know exactly what I was talking about. He's the best. It's He's it's a great best. movie. Uh-huh. It's it's done in three parts. Mm-hmm. You got to see a movie called Box of Moonlight, which is the same director. I've never oh, heard it. It also has uh, uh, what's his name? Give me an eye patch. Uh, James. Oh, uh, Dermot Moroney. Dermot Moroney. He plays a bully. It's hilarious. Uh, it's it's Sam Rockwell and John Turturro. Oh. And Sam Rockwell awesome. playing like a uh, Davy Crockett type who just kind of lives out in the woods by himself because he's been bullied so what's much. What's it called? It's Box called Box of Moonlight. of Moonlight. I made you watch that, you right, Brian? Decides. Same director, same kind of oh, vibe. Oh, I can't wait. I, yeah, it's it's so much fun. I might like fun. Box more. I really? Like, yeah. Oh, now I got to see it. Living in Oblivion is so much fun. It's so much fun. It's just a, a, a bizarre comedy with all these people that you love from the past and love now, and I, I couldn't recommend it higher. Yeah, it's funny. I've been, uh, yeah, I, don't, I can't even say. Yeah, love, I that. Love, love that. that. I love that you love it. I love that it's on your net. On, yes. on number one. My number one. Oh, yeah. Uh, all right, listener list, Brian, unless yeah, you're going to tackle this. I don't have you're it. You're not going to do anything. You do have it. I believe I you said to you as well. All right, number uh, number five for the listeners is Clerks. 
Oh, this is great, Mitch. He also put, uh, so Mitch Burns has been putting together our uh, listener list uh, for the last few weeks now. And he's also doing that thing that we used to do. We should probably get back to doing where he tells us where we can find these movies. So Clerks, 1994's Clerks is available on Pluto with ads. Mm -hmm. Also, All of Three's Company is available on Pluto. You should know that. Mm -hmm. Um, And then it's also streaming on Paramount Plus. Uh, Number four from the listeners is Kids. Yeah, sure. uh, Unstreamable, aside from a copy on YouTube with Spanish subtitles. Hey. Could do worse. Los Ninos. That's right. <laughs> number number three, Hard Eight. Yeah, there you go. Forgot about that. Is it? Is it? Our, yeah, oh, total. I mean, I don't know if it was a studio uh, film. Like I know what the characters want. Uh, I don't know if this is very <laughs> experimental. All right, what? Uh, I love that movie though. It, as long as you don't call it Sydney. 97, 1997. It's available. Title, it's available mm. on Prime. And Paramount Plus, as well as Epics with an X. Don't get confused. Uh, number two. I was confused until you clear that up. <laughs> number two is Go. 1999's Ooh. Go. Doug Lyman's Go, uh, which I think you would love. Okay, great. Yeah. Done. And uh, that's available on Fubo. Go and sweet. Fubo and yeah. Showtime. Go might have lost some of its luster because it was so high. For, it was so frenetic and like techno. It's, and it's based around time. rave culture. And like Run, Lola, Run. Yeah, I mean, Ronaldo Run doesn't didn't quite make my have list. the um, oomph, yeah. right? But yeah. it was right there for me, but too. But Go, like Anderson was alluding to, is very of the time. Like, yeah. it's kids going to raves yeah, and all I love that it. shit. I cried at the opening. Like, within five, ten minutes of watching Ronaldo Run in the theater, I cried because I'd never seen anything like it. Oh, I was wow. just so moved by how frenetic and, like... Yeah. It was my it was my number six. It just didn't make the list. Being John Malkovich is the listener's number one. Yeah, nineteen ninety nine rentable for nice. Ryan has a pulse with the people. I do ninety nine. Also, up. Rans anyone? Also, Rans? You got some uh, extras you'd like to uh, highlight? For I have the, a uh, long, long, list. long list of also I Rans. No, if we need to I'll read the entire them list. I'll read them now. Mm-hmm. Flesh Gordon, one of them. Some of them I I, I left out because I couldn't uh, reconcile if they were true art house films. Yeah. Dazed and Confused came up same, on plenty of lists, but same. I was like, that felt pretty mainstream. Yeah, I had the same thought. I mean, it's kind of meandering. It doesn't have a plot. Just because Parker Posey's in it does not That's an art house movie yeah. make. Bad Lieutenant, of course, Before Sunrise, uh, The Crying Game, The Red, White, and Blue Trilogy. You haven't seen the entire trilogy. But yeah, Get the still be a good fuck hip- out of still here. still be a good hipster pick. Sling Blade? <laughs> Sling Blade is not. I heard in Linda. <laughs> Drugstore Cowboy. Get out of my house! You ever see Drugstore Cowboy? No. Although I think that's the 80s, though. Uh, Brian, uh, you're just reading the list. Of- <laughs> I'm gonna, these are ones I didn't research. <laughs> Why are you reading? Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross. Would you consider that an art house? <coughs> oh! No. So that's what I'm saying. <laughs> usual suspects? Sex lies and videotape. Yeah, okay, usual yeah. suspects. But again, it's so big, it didn't even it yeah. didn't even occur to me. Well, that's why I left it off. Boogie Nights and Office Space. But mm-hmm. I feel like those are both pretty mainstream. Yeah. Um, what was the name of the movie with Rose McGowan? I'm not here to do your homework for you. Gina. Okay, never mind. That was what I was trying to think about. The other, the couple oh, of that didn't make the list. Yeah, you know yeah. What I'm talking Empire about? Records? No. no, that's with Liv Tyler. No, this is way weirder. They, there was like kind of like um, apocalyptic. It doesn't matter. Didn't make my list. It does, um, it does matter. I need to know now. Thank you. I do too. Like something doom, something. <laughs> Planet uh, Terror. Doom Generation. Yes. Is that Doom it? Generation. Thank you. I was thinking about that. Um, did you guys ever see a very odd movie called Twin Falls, Idaho? Yes. It's no. Gus Van Sant. Of course okay. you know it. It's about these conjoined twins. Oh. Um, and then do you remember Trees Lounge? A lot of Steve Buscemi on yeah, that Yeah, Buscemi. Didn't, didn't yeah. you direct Trees Lounge? Oh, uh, yeah. 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 Those are the only other ones I was thinking of. Oh, that's it. Yeah. All right. right. Rose McGowan. Like Doom Generation. Where Thank you. That out? All right. Okay. Uh, bu- 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 Twins Fall, Idaho, right? Twins Twin, Fall. Twin yeah. Falls. Twin Falls, Twin Idaho. Twin Falls, Idaho. Well, Speaking are, of conjoined, conjoined twins, um, there's one. Uh, it's a Michael Polish film, actually. I'm thinking of another. Uh, Twin Falls. Oh, son of a bitch. What is it? Okay. Uh, you, of course, you've seen one about conjoined twins that are. Never mind. I want. I got to know. Put back together. <gasps> what? I mean, it's 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 known by everyone. It's, it's a human centipede, but that's the whole point of the. Oh, reason. I understand. I see. Yeah, no, 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 you're, right. you're absolutely right. Yeah. right I'm going to cut all this. We can't have. Uh, that was the tagline. 100 percent medically accurate. <laughs> Doctor Drew was enraged when I asked him on air. I like out of the fucking blue. I just cold cocked him with Drew. Here's the premise of the movie. All right, he's doing this. Now they're su- they're suggesting this is 100 percent medically accurate. Is it? And he is just enraged. He's like, "What are you doing right now?" I'm like, this asking is so a, irresponsible. Asking a question. That's great. We did an episode. You, you are half right, Gina. We've done many, many top fives, uh, including top five taglines. Mm. And that was my number one. This is the best tagline of all time. 100% medically accurate. <laughs> Pretty good. How does it get any better? That's great. Uh, the Addiction. 
uh, is uh, also on my list. Uh, that, that Abel Ferrara is the addiction, uh, which hard, very, very hard to watch. Lily Taylor is on I don't know her. as well. Crash, um, David Cronenberg's Crash, Gummo, of course. Box of Moonlight, which I just no, went off. I bad Boy Bubby. Oh, he's a bad, bad boy. Bad boy Bubby. He's a, he's a bad boy. He's Freeway, bad boy. which Brian does not like, but I love. The Last Days of Disco. No, Freeway 2. Confessions of a Trick. That's baby. a tough one. Yeah, so. <laughs> That's the, one I don't like. The Last Days of Disco. Uh, safe, Funny Games. Lahane, Clerks, Brian. Uh, Run Lola Run and Buffalo 66. I just have yeah. Buffalo 66 on too many lists. How is that not on your list? Eh, it's on too many lists. It's probably my Spread number one favorite yeah. art house film, if you can call, call it that. It oh, awesome. Christina Ricci, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. he takes some chances. He does some some things oh, really? that are not uh, of the norm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Buffalo 66. All right. Uh, how are we doing? Let's, uh, let's, uh, Should let's we let you gamble up. with us? Mm-hmm. Yeah, what happened? Do you have the results? Can you do that at least? Oh, shit, yeah. So, I don't know if you know, we've been listening to a couple episodes. We gamble every episode mm. on the movie that's coming out that week. It's a nice way for nice way for us to look um, back at movies at the top five. See how you did? Well, look at the... No, no. Sorry. It's a way for us to look forward with the gambling, yeah. look back with the top five, and uh, uh, look at our current films with our flick fashions. It's a nice little, uh, hey. you know, 360 right there. We gambled on a man called Otto. Anderson guessed 52. I guessed 51 on the Rotten Tomato score, and there are 117 reviews in. Anderson was initially disappointed that he had 52 and not 51, but good <laughs> news, Anderson. Yeah. The score is 68, making you the winner. Hmm. That's un- unfortunate. All right. We're not going... <laughs> right, I win... Let's keep let's keep that uh, keep track of that. But I'm not going to be assigning you a movie because okay. it's time to watch films for the listeners. We have a backlog. We do. Ooh. Brian's films. not helping by just not hearing me when I tell him what we're watching. He's like, <laughs> oh, we're, like probably. day of the show. Like, what were we supposed to watch for the listener? I'm like, <laughs> Brian, I'm going to see you in 20 minutes. I'll just tell you in person what That's you missed. Funny. Yeah, because last week we were supposed to be watching A Good Woman is Hard to Find. Which well, that was a good movie. Kind of a lost movie. Uh, mm. I really, really enjoyed that. And we have uh, um, John Campbell to thank for that one. And uh, it was kind of lost in the uh, because of COVID, COVID during, the, during the plague. Is the COVID John. shuffle. But uh, it's tough to watch. It's like, it's like a female blue ruin at times. Oh, no. I really like that A Good Woman is Hard to Find. Mm. I think they marketed it wrong. I think you're going to like parts of it, I'll too. I'll be watching. Tough parts of it are tough to Who watch. Who assigned it to us? John Campbell. So okay. we'll be watching that next week, as well as Dr. Horrible Sing Along. Okay, that's going to be uh, thanks right. to Eric Robbins, one of our favorites. I Eric feel like Robbins, you would have seen that. Um, no, I've never assigned heard Assigned us Dr. Horrible Sing Along, which is available on YouTube. You can <laughs> buy it for oh, 19 Oh, is that the Neil Patrick Harris? Yes. Oh, yes, yes, yes. And yes, it's yes. only 42 minutes. So we're going to we're gonna do both of those, all right? Can do. All right, cool. Do you remember? Are you going to write this shit down right now? So I, I, will, not, be, like, I will be texting you on Tuesday. Well, at least we'll it's an hour. about 90 minutes. All right, Brian, let's do some credits. And Gina, hey, no, we're it was gamble. really fantastic. Oh, to thank you. Are I loved it. Yeah, we're going to gamble. Okay. Hold on. Gina's going to gamble with us. Yeah? I should, yeah, fuck yeah, she is. Okay. Gina, if you win, you get to assign us a film. Oh, good. He knows. Brian knows. It's very out of the mouths of babes. I don't know anything about this. About, this is, okay, what this about is, this out of the mouths of babes? I, I know nothing about movies. I'm not going to, you know, I have no oh, expertise. Wow. <laughs> we're in luck. Oh, good. Uh, Anderson. <laughs> There's a movie called Plane. It's about a plane. Yeah, yeah. It's coming out this week. I think I saw a trailer for this. I did too. I think I, I think I thumbs downed it um, to my sister who was watching. I think it was when I saw Babylon. I think I saw a trailer for it. It looked really bad. It looked terrible. It's either that or Missing. Missing's next week. So Plane, fuck Plane. Plane actually plane. looked pretty good. Actually, no, Do you know, know. are you familiar with Plane? No. It's a Gerard Butler film. Say no more. Yeah, where the plane goes down in uh, fucking South America. I or like something. the uh, premise, actually. The premise is pretty good. And they're hunted. Oh. Well, I mean, he's also transporting a oh, uh, a, a known uh, murderer who is. Uh, uh, That's a movie been made many times. Mm. But I mean, do you see the twist coming? Like the murderer is going to end up uh, actually helping. helping Spoiler him. alert! Well, they show the truck, and it could go nowhere else. It could go nowhere else. Okay. We're trying to guess the right down your number. Score? Same, same as that. Yeah, same as that. Okay. Well, something. the thing I always would the first thing you got to ask yourself is: Is it rotten or fresh? So I'm going to say it's rotten. Oh, interesting. But barely. Oh, we got we to we like all say it at the same time oh, or oh. else like, you know, Brian Oh, right. Will. Yeah. Because we always wrote ours down. Yeah. Okay. Should well, we just shout it at the down. same time? Okay. I'll write mine what's down. What's your, well, I already wrote mine down. So uh, what's your number? There's no need to write. I mean, okay. You just say it on three. Uh, one, one, two, two three. 47. 47. <gasps> Whoa. Uh-oh. Now if it turns <gasps> down to 47, the, uh, <gasps> The, uh, the, oh my God. the show ends. We, are, if it actually we have mine oh, melted. Two. Yeah, yeah, with us two. Oh, we have, Your, <laughs> yours doesn't matter. Oh my yours God. Matter. Oh my God. 47. That's yeah. a bad choice. We, well, we're locking in 47. But we're, we're both probably wrong because this guy, <laughs> he wakes up, he looks around tomatoes. I know. 
Who are you telling? It's Breakfast my lock Rotten screen. Tomatoes. I never hear. He yeah. almost crashes often because he's checking Rotten Tomatoes I get it. in traffic. He only eats Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah. This is Alter. I, th- I think it's so. Like, what do you think it is, Brian? I wrote. I wrote it in fifty six. Okay. Oh, forty seven. Might be a good sign for you two. As of now, there is no score. Yeah. Oh yeah. Probably One hour sign. and forty seven minutes. Mm. Amazing. All right. Here is the music. What is it Play on IMDb? I gotta know. It's always in the sevens. That's right, 7.1. So we're playing The Godfather Part 2. That's right. Uh, it is no score. Oh I guess boy. they don't do the score for it to release. Probably smart. Hmm. No, they do. Like, if it's like only playing festivals and whatnot, I don't you think, think it's... You think playing, playing festivals? I'm saying that they, it's not like they wait for the actual release <laughs> if, they, if the movie's playing. Oh, this is uh, Werner Herzog's plane. I didn't notice that. What? He directed plane. Werner Herzog did not direct... <laughs> I've already made my guess. You can't try and sway me. <laughs> Well, there's no score, so you can change your score if you want. Right. Werner Herzog has nothing to do with plane. I guarantee you he's never heard of plane. He barely knows what a fucking real plane is, let alone the movie plane, which he will never, ever see or know about. That's probably true. One of the greatest stories I have from, like, movies and directors and anything, you know, I've I've been a part of or seen or or got to interview or talk to or be a part of is I went to a a, a screening of... uh, Treasure of the Sierra Madre mm. that was hosted by Werner Herzog mm. at one of the most hipster events you can go to, mm. which is where they show like movies in the cemetery or whatever. Sure. Uh, I knows I'm a fan. Yeah. But uh Jenny knows I'm not a fan. <laughs> it's it, it's fun if you go with the right people. I agree. Brian hates outdoor movies. Yeah. We heard that Werner Herzog was gonna be there. I love Treasure of the Sierra Madre, so I'm like, we gotta go. Uh I went and I, I met him, I got to shake his hand, which was fantastic because the man's a living legend. Wow. Spilled some wine on his blanket, which oh, is kind of Jesus. a running gig. Yeah, he didn't know, I don't think. Yeah. But uh, at the end of, of the screening of Treasure of the Sierra Madre, which has, you know, it's not his film, he just loves it. It's one of the 10 movies that he's actually seen because he <laughs> prides himself on not seeing movies and not knowing anything. <laughs> uh, somebody's asking him questions about Danny Boyle. I forget which movie it was, maybe Slumdog Millionaire. Some mm-hmm. movie was out at the time that Danny Boyle was kind of like the right. eighth guy. 127 hours. And he was trying, mm. he was trying, like, whoever was asking the question, they were trying to, like, draw a parallel between Danny Boyle and Werner Herzog. And they, they were, it was embarrassing. It was a ridiculous question. And uh, his his Werner Herzog's uh, uh, and I say Werner it's Werner but I say Werner. Uh, his response was uh, Danny Danny who's this Danny I've never heard of her. <laughs> and it was like he, he was coming off winning best director. Danny Boyle was like the <laughs> it director at that moment. Big timed by and he's Werner. Like, I've never heard of her. It was like, just the greatest. That's fantastic. Fucking that's response. It really was. That's great. It's it's great if it was authentic. Even better if it was cooked. I don't think he has the ability to cook. Oh, he cooks. Well, you know, Brian does that all the time. What? You'll who's ask that? him, who, who? Yeah, that's like, that's like his go-to little joke. I know. Who's that's that? Right. I'm sorry, who's that? Cutting Avery? and funny. Yeah. Fine. <laughs> I'm not as bad. I'm not ashamed. He has certain things that it's like every time he hears something, he has to say I it. I know. Like it could be like, the health of his child could be at stake and he still will have yeah. to say it's it. It's like compulsed. ending shaving a haircut. He can't help it. He's compulsed. Who's my child? <laughs> he just did it. <laughs> <laughs> Gina Grad, thank you so much oh, for being this here. This is good so times. fun. Uh, you thank have you. a book coming out. I want people to know about thank it. Oh, we should plug it in the beginning. No, we'll plug it in the beginning fine. of the of the, of the yes. first week show yes. as well. Oh, we're thanks. plugging her coming up. Um, I uh, this is I don't. When, does this get put up? Plugs soon? at the end. Get married. Married. Okay. Well, I'm going to give you the name of the book Ooh. for the first time in public. Oh, goes up. This goes up. It was really great days. meeting you, Gina. Oh yeah, you too. All right. Until next time. We got more? I yeah. thought we were done. <laughs> Real quick. Uh, this is the first time I've said the name of the book. I'm Drop very excited. Is this really the first yeah. time? Drop the music. Show some goddamn respect. Wow, this is kind of exciting. <laughs> um, the, the, the title will lead you to knowing exactly what it's about. I've been working on it for over a year and a half. Very excited. It's called My Extra Mom. It's a children's oh, book about having a this. stepmother, which yes, I am. Yes. And very accessible. I wrote it because um, I think there's a huge hole in the market for... Um, books that normalize stepmothers and don't threaten the biological mother. Mm -hmm. So that was the whole point of walking this very thin tightrope. I'm very proud of it. And it's called My Extra Mom and it will be, it'll be out in about, uh, in a couple weeks. My Extra Mom. Where where, where could you find that? Uh, Just follow me and shit. It's, it's, uh, it'll be on Amazon and it'll be kind of everywhere. Everywhere books. Barnes and Noble making a comeback. I know. Very doubtful because they really ram ya. Really? But I'll try. Yeah, I'll try. Amazon rams ya. I know. Jeff Bezos made more money on my movie than anyone will <laughs> there ever make. There is no way, Brian, shut up, to make money off of writing a book. Hmm. There's a way. Shut up, Brian. Um, um, you but can I'm get excited. some cancer. That's true. Yeah, yeah, Gina, here, I'll, I'll tell you the secret <laughs> off the air. It's a one-step process. <laughs> 
I'm very excited about it. It was something I've been wanting to do forever. My uh, it sounds important. Dear, I ho- I hope it is. My yeah. dear friend um, did the illustration. She's a, kind of a big deal. And uh, go buy it. My extra mom. My extra mom. I yeah. will it be available like to buy directly from you if people want to autograph. Yeah, copies. yeah, 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 okay. yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. Well, we'll do that's, all as one who so has, follow Gina. We'll well, I'm all. saying like yeah. you have a website or a place where people can go to say hey. It will be pinned to the top of my Twitter nice. at Gina Grad and go. all the information will be there. Nice, nice, nice. Good luck with the book, Thank Gina. You. Thank you for coming on. I we will plug it. Assuming my uh, my friend helps helps me here on the uh, on the first. Uh, we already plugged it at the top of that because I don't like you know, plugs at the end. They get buried. People don't hear them. Oh, so. Top five nice. extra moms. That's what I was gonna say. It would have been fun to do a, a stepmom top five, but they're also horrible. Yeah. So that, and that's the point. But not that that's, movie, right? With the one with the uh, oh, with Julia Roberts. Yeah, isn't that an okay one? I don't know. I never I saw didn't it. See She's it. on a horse at one point. I don't like chick flicks, but um. What you got the uh, your number one was like a chick flick. At least the poster looked like it. Parker Posey shooting people. No, I Brian knows I don't like. I've never seen Love Actually. I've, I don't. I don't care about those movies. Love Actually rules. But but that's the thing. Disney and Disney. The, the stepmom's always this evil bitch, and we're just. I'm just kind of trying to make a little change. Mm. All right. Okay. All right. There we go. I love it. This is great. Thank uh, you. Uh, my extra mom available soon. To keep checking Gina's socials for that. Thank you to Kick Bush. Well, thank you to Gina. Oh, the House thank of Yes you. was your number two. That's, that's right. Nice. Thank you to Kick Bush. They're our featured artist this week. Oh, we have listener art. Hold on. Let me look at that. Come on, Brian, get on top of it. I've been meaning to do this for a while. Actually, so, <laughs> so, uh... Oh, no. What is this a Dahmer thing? What is this? I don't what? know. I don't know where the uh, notes are. Where are the notes? <laughs> oh, there it is. All right. L- L- our, our, our featured artist, uh, featured art, uh, for, I should say, from our listener, is from Ludwig Van Bacon. And uh, this actually is not far from the truth. LVB. It's a, it's a, it could be a real scenario. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, he's suggesting that you force me to, to watch it. Hey, by the way, we got to uh, set a date and, and watch the next movie, which is oh uh, my gosh. coming up. So. We got so much to do. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we'll be doing that. I'm assuming, I think the last Thursday of the month, I'll watch along for all of you uh, guys who watch along with us and uh, have a good time interacting with each other. Some of the more hardcore uh, film vault listeners are part of those chats, and they're very funny and astute, and whatever it is we're watching, the group discussion, usually led by Howie and Florence and Mitch and Gio and uh, you know a bunch of regulars in there. It's a good time. It's a big. It's a it's a film it's ball a party. party that we it's have party. each week. Yeah. Thanks, each Ludwig. Month, each Thanks, month. LVB. Appreciate you. Thanks, Kickbush. They're our featured artists this week. Check them out. Anderson and Brian.com is where you go for everything film vault. There is a uh, Amazon link at the top of the page where you can, if you're doing shopping, we uh, rely on the Amazon Associates program to uh, make a little bit of money on the show. And uh, you guys are awesome at tapping that when you need to do your shopping. Costs you nothing. Helps us a little bit on the back end. Anderson and Brian on Instagram. The Film Vault on Twitter. The Film Vault on Patreon. The Film Vault on Facebook. <sighs> <laughs> We're on YouTube, but now I forget what it's called because Avery doesn't write it in the right uh, section. It's Film Ball Podcast. The Film Ball Podcast. The Film Ball Podcast, yes. And Eric is doing some amazing work over there. You should check it out, Brian. You should see what he does. I, I don't think you've I'm even good. bothered to look. I'm You're good. such a highfalutin, bougie prick. I got more, I got more time. <laughs> I got more time now. Maybe He's got three more hours. I got a hole in my face, you son of a bitch. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Thank you to our Patreon listeners. We appreciate Slight you. Slight improvement. Thank you, dude. <laughs> That was really mean. I mean, part of your face is gone now. That's better, right? Less of your face <laughs> oh, is better. There was a cancerous part of my face that needed to go. Uh, it was not cancerous. Of course, it was a basal cell carcinoma. Oh, I thought it was, uh, they were just checking it out like they like to do. That's not it how was it actual works. cancer? Yes. Oh, I apologize for everything I said. As, as, I, as I said to Brian already, this is basic bitch cancer. We're yeah, not yeah. interested in this I, one. I barely even paid it in my mind. Yeah. Thanks, Giovanni. Thanks, Jordan Wolf, Mitch Burns, and Mike Cole. we got to start putting Eric in there. Come Eric on. should be in there. Eric Kath. Come on. Come on. Come on, Avery. Fix that. I'm not going to mention Avery's podcast, Invade the Decade, because he's not here. <laughs> Instead, I'll say until next time. We do it. For Vi- Eric Katz is right there. What's wrong with it's you? I the see top. the show it's notes. On the previous. <laughs> it's on the wrong episode. We do it for Van Gogh.